think we're assholes, but we're dick is your best. What's up, guys? Hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to Dickish at Best. Dabish at Best. Dabish at Best. If you are watching this and saw Saul's horrific, horrific dab. Uh, we are... Get on it, Richard. An off-topic, talk-about-whatever bullshit podcast. And uh, we're just three friends and sometimes more, sometimes less. Sometimes guests. Uh, guest episodes can be fun. Uh, but we get together every two weeks, pop these things out. I am Brett Beck, your host for this week as we do a rotating host. Um and on my right here, Saul Bridges. You guys know me from Triangle Squared. And my left here, Blaze Lewis. Mr. Lewis. If you guys like what we're doing wow. and listen to us on podcast services, consider Sorry. giving us a review. Let people know what bullshit we say and yeah. whether or not they should and, give and, us time for our bullshit. And you take a drink of water in the middle of your words. And <laughs> That is true. I was parched. <laughs> quite thirsty anyway uh, if you like what we're doing of course consider giving us a review and uh and letting us know what you like about the show what you don't like about the show things that we should tidy up uh things that we may read and say yeah fuck that we don't feel like doing that who knows it's honestly up in the air with this show uh but if you want to watch the show you can do so over on youtube at youtube.com slash nartech where we also have our weekly not dirty and very family friendly uh, PlayStation based podcast it's called Triangle Squared, uh, where we do stay safe for work. Uh, this podcast is titled Dickish at Best for a reason. And you've been warned. And you've been warned. I guess that's what we'll leave it at. Uh, so let's see. One of the this things, episode, by the way, big announcement, guys. Gosh. This, this episode yeah. is. Uh, Stole the mic from Look behind me. you. No, I'm kidding. What's up? Look behind you. Oh, God damn it. Okay, hold on. I can fix this. You well, guys talk. I'm hey, gonna let him steal that. While, put a timestamp and like, blink, I, and we're back. <laughs> I'm gonna while Brett fix, fixes our backdrop for our audio listeners. I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys something really, really cool. This is our big announcement for the episode. We've been now partnered with uh, the newest of the new brand of audio called Helen Keller's. They are new earbuds that have the best sound canceling technology of them all. They also come pair with a free free pair of sunglasses too. So. Yeah. So what level are you on? Hell when you get there. Hell when I get there? Hell. When hell? You get, what level of hell are you going to? When I'm you not a Dante's Inferno kind of guy, even though that story always looked really interesting to me. So you don't believe there's layers of hell? No, I know. I'm saying like, I don't, know, I don't know the story. I don't know the story well enough to answer the question. But um, there we go. You hear the squeakiness. The spiders are <laughs> popping out. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that 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 looks. I'm so used to the spider webs now. Like, by the way, guys, you should be watching these. Have them on the TV while you play video games. You always get the little insights that audio listeners don't get. But um, I'm so used to seeing that with spider webs now. It looked weird without them. Yeah. Our decorations for our Halloween episode. Um. Yeah. So, what have you guys been up to this week besides work? Anything interesting? Anything fun? Uh, uh not playing games. For, I okay, I'll take that back. Take that back. I've played games, but it was all Switch and it was all Zelda and it was very, very short. And I was always doing it while playing something else since Zelda doesn't give a fuck about voice acting, nor does in pretty much any Nintendo. You were playing IP. something else or you were watching something else? Watching something okay. else. I was like, um, are you playing in the middle of cutscenes or something? No, by the way, I beat Zelda, so I'm going to give it to Blaze to borrow as yes. long as you're okay with that. Yes, I'm I won't trade it I haven't played anything in two weeks. Like, yeah, literally. I haven't played my PS4 at all this week. I liked Link's Awakening a lot. Like, I thought it was well, really I good. It, it, there's some problems with it, but you know. Oh well, yeah, still good. Well, I redeemed. Um, I had a buttload of Sony reward points. So I, I went ahead and got Call of Duty just for the sake of like on PS Four. Yeah, through because I had enough codes to get it for free, and that in three months of PlayStation Plus. I was like, yeah. Me, Eric, and Gavin will be playing that tonight. I believe. I, I got it just for the sake of seeing. Like, if I don't like it, I don't like it. And, you know what? I really miss out on. You know. I mean, yeah. Do fair. you like Battlefield? What? Do you like Battlefield? I've never really played it enough okay. to give it a shot. This is a really weird mixture of both of them, at least from the beta. And now, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, Josh at work was showing me um, footage of the Ground War, which is always something I think they've had in Call of Duty games. It's like the big uh, 16 versus 16 battles. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think they've always had so, that, actually. I'm pretty sure. Well, no, well okay. All the newer ones, I guess I should say, have had it. I don't know. I don't think that they've ever gone that big, have they? I think so. That's 32 players, and that's, you 10 know. 10 v 10. Maybe it was something 32 different. 32 used to be like a big deal for Battlefield, even though maybe so. other games did more, which, I mean, it's I, all. I feel like the name Ground War is familiar to me in Call of Duty. And I just very, don't know why. Well could um, be, I don't know. Maybe it's something World War II started. But 
the the maps the map that he showed me was like i, I could have sworn i was looking if it wasn't for the overlay i was like that's a battlefield map that's a massive map that they were on i'm like that's kind of cool i'm glad they're at least the kind of adapting because a lot of people have gotten real stale with call of duty lately well when you included. think about that with anything though when you're dealing with competition across the board kind of gets weird that it seems like almost more often than not w- one of the two eventually gives in and starts adopting some of the stuff from the other one and I guess to me, I don't feel like Battlefield has done it. I was going to say that, yeah. But now Call of Duty has ceded some ground to say that something that Battlefield's doing is is at least better enough for, or at least they like it enough to put it in this particular technically rotation. Because here's the thing: the next Call of Duty game may not be anything like this. That's this true. may just be the way that Infinity Ward move forward with it. But also, I know this may sound weird. I don't want to talk about games too much on this podcast, just because it feels like. I already I, talk about games. Yeah, but we don't get to talk else. about other certain kinds of games. Well, we can do what we want to. We can just create another podcast where we talk about games. You oh, got yeah. some time for me? In general. You want to give me, you want to no, create some we're time? We're trying to find time for the D&Ds. That's true. I, did did but, you actually look at what I sent you? Yeah, the Rick the, and Morty thing? Yeah. I pretty or, a Rick I and Morty? The, it's, it's a Rick and Morty crossover box. Yucky. Eh, it let, though, they look like they put a lot of work into it. It's a, it's a, it's a one to five person campaign just for level one through six. You know, it's a... You know, and they've got character sheets and stuff. You can choose your it's where you can actually kind of out of the box do it. If we do like, if y'all want to do D and D, I can join you if we do it during weekdays for sure. Well, well I, I talked mean, about yeah. say you said give me time to be dead honest, Saul. I have a lot of free time. Now. You have a lot of free time <laughs> yeah. if you really think What's, about your your change in vocation, as we'll te- say professionally. Technically, now that I've started this new job, um, I have I work more hours, but I have more free time. It feels like mm-hmm. because every time I get home, I have at least technically. Every time I get home, I have four hours at least to get eight hours of sleep, which means I have four hours of free time until I have to have eight hours of sleep. I don't typically get eight hours of sleep. I typically get <laughs> six to seven. So the compelling podcast of sleep amounts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of sleep, you know, when you get yeah, really, really, mattress. you know, when you get a lot of sleep is when you're depressed as fuck. You know I, what I mean? Oh, I you know just, what you mean. You just fucking hit that bed. Man, why am I only getting four hours? <laughs> Well, I guess that's the problem is it swings both ways. You either get way too much sleep or that's, absolutely yeah. not. Sounds like depression with a side of sleep apnea. <laughs> I, I might have. I don't know. about. I, I had sleep apnea when I was um, overweight, 110%. Jess used to have to like, punch me to wake me up. I've woken yeah. up before. But and, I haven't had any issues since I've lost weight. I've woken up before, um, and Annie's, Annie's told me about it. I remember sometimes, but it, it's not that I wake up gasping. I've done that once, I think, or maybe twice. But I will... Um, I'll, I'll just jerk up in bed. <laughs> yeah. I'll just jerk up awake in bed and um, I'll just be sitting there and apparently like I'm just sitting up and I'm, I'm asleep, but I don't know what it is. I almost want to buy a CPAP machine just to see if that helps me, but I I'm, <laughs> well, you have to have a prescription. Well, you, you don't, don't get a whole machine. There's mouthpieces you can get because in your case, it might just be your tongue being too far. And they, yeah, they there's push things you. that can hold your there, And there's nose pieces, too. So either one, you can try those. They're a lot. Well, I use breather at strips, and that actually helps out me a lot. But um, we'll So see. it sounds like most of your problems are probably in your nose, but you could try the little mouthpieces. Well, see, what's, what's weird is what's helped me sleep better what are is these I wear... I wear mouth guards now because I was grinding my teeth in my sleep. I, see, that's my problem is that I don't know if I can wear a mouthpiece depending on like what kind what? you mean because I'm supposed to wear a mouth guard. You know, I, the one I, that I have TMJ. the red ball that you put in, it's got the leather straps that go around the back. <laughs> my, the ball, mine's black. <laughs> yeah, my, yeah, mine's pink with chains, dude. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> I got a buckle on mine. But um, yeah, you know. are you talking about like a, is it like a mouthpiece with like a hole in it that helps me breathe better? No, uh, well, the on the on the one for the apnea. Mm-hmm. I, it it presses your it kind of in the back. It keeps your tongue from coming up. Oh, and depresses blocking. your tongue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I'm supposed to because I have TMJ. So it depresses I'm su- your tongue. I'm, your tongue's just sitting in its mouth. Like, God damn it! <laughs> I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> My tongue works for CVS at this point. <laughs> is that what happens when you bite your tongue? It's like fuck it. Oh, uh, dude, I'm fucking out of here, man. Talk about I'm tired going, of this life. Talk about going from like zero rage to a hundred in in a second by accidentally biting, biting your, your tongue, tongue or fuck your yeah, cheek. Dude. Oh man, kids, Kyrie's face. When she bites, and it's not to be fair, it's not her tongue or her cheek, but it's because she's in such a hurry to eat, she sometimes wholeheartedly bites her finger so fucking hard. And the look on her face is just like, oh my God. It, well, at least she loses her fucking mind. At least she's learned. Well, hey, is she learning? To sound no, like a- <laughs> she's done this like 10 times in the last year. I feel like that's too many. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> The, the, the phrase you just said, she's in such a hurry to eat. I never told y'all the story on why I have to drink 
whenever I eat, like I have to take a sip. Like, you know, I drink a lot of soda or tea or whatever. You're a professional eater. Yeah, I, w- I wish. Uh, you, d- you dip that weenie in the water before you shove it down your throat. Uh, <laughs> I like the sound effects. But um, so I don't know if I told y'all this. I know Andy knows for sure. But whenever I was young and I was specifically heavier than I what, what I am now. <laughs> when you were a fat shit. When I was, yes. You know, <laughs> there's Saul, still. Please, there's, please send me a picture of you as a so kid so I can put it, right it in there. the thumbnail. I want to see. I want to see if I can. I can text Seth right now. I want to put it in the see, thumbnail. Um, and uh, see if he can send me the picture because I looked like the kid from Heavyweights. Yeah, I, I remember like the picture. It. It's yeah, me at, my, at a um, at a birthday party, but uh, I uh, okay. Yeah, you were one of those cute fat boys though. Like if you went to a Catholic church, the priest would still want to touch you. I mean, you you were fine. Whoa! But um, I just took a screenshot on my phone. But anyways, I remember. So like, I grew up kind of <laughs> obese, and it, 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 it was really like I kind of I kind of want to blame my dad, but at the same time I didn't because did you grow up or did you grow out both <laughs> but uh my, my dad he wouldn't let me or he wouldn't when i was like 10 or 11 i shouldn't have been eating double quarter pounder meals but i was but he wasn't slapping that shit out of your hands yeah. well sitting. he was I, he was ordering it for me i was like hey give me a number four with cheese or whatever and, me and cheese so was like, he supposed to be like no fuck you son yeah, you get think, a single quarter pounder yeah he's like no, you piece of shit. yeah if, he's like you don't need all that we're gonna get you a medium no, fry re- real quick real thing though i actually really go through that with Kyrie. I, i'll go through like she'll sometimes she doesn't do that she just wants to eat constantly so i'm like okay well if you're eating constantly you've got to be eating something that's not crazy i'm like you can eat cheese sticks or you can eat you know, fruits within reason, as long as you still aren't eating too much. But it's like the things that she wants the most is all sweets. And I'm like, God, I mean, I, I guess the kid thing in general, it's like you live in a world full of countless sweets at your fingertips. But My kids just want French fries, man. No matter what I do. Make sure your mic's a little closer to you. But, um, just it, to be safe side. So when, when specialty, like, combos would come out for like fast food places i would always like want to try them and i remember there was something that mcdonald's did it was some kind of special barbecue big mac thing and i'll tell you this this is how this sets the story my mom and stepdad used to take us to the mcdonald's on richmond road that had the big inside playhouse oh fuck yeah i was young enough to play on the playhouse and order this double this double big mac thing (laughs) so i remember i was sitting there and i was eating it but i was wanting to eat it like my sister quickly so i can go play and I was eating it quickly, and my stepdad was like, hey, make sure you slow down. You don't want to choke. And I said, what do you mean? He's like, you could choke to death if you don't swallow your food like that, or if you swallow too much food. And I was like, I could die from eating? And he's like, yes. <laughs> that's like, sounds, he's that's like, even like though dead. he's still killing you from eating, technically. <laughs> well, that's yeah. also true. That, but as a kid, that almost has to sound like, nah, that's what that bullshit of don't sit too close to the TV or you'll go blind. It's like, you just don't want me in the fucking way of the TV. Well, no, I think, I think that how fast I was literally shoveling food in my mouth and I wasn't drinking anything. You legit like, worried? Ed, he was like, "Hey, yeah, hey. I, I think I was, <laughs> Yo, was like, hey, you need to slow down. You're gonna, you can get, you can hurt yourself. You're watching uh, down with some Sprite. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's uh, Dr. Pepper. heart failure at eight years old. It's definitely. Not. He, he said you need to take sips more often as you eat, and that really actually scared me. Like I, I had really did bad anxiety have, as a kid. Did your life flash before your eyes as an eight year old? How old like, were you? You think? Oh, maybe ten. Ten. Yeah, I, and I was sitting there thinking, I was like, man, if I could die while eating, I could die while doing anything, and like. <laughs> I had such anxiety. We went to Baskin Robbins after that, and I was just like, I don't even want ice cream. <laughs> I don't, I don't want good. Ice. Maybe You're that more, was his plan. <laughs> your mortality was just fucked as a good, man. But, um, I'm telling you, like ever since then, I have to take a sip as I like. I'll eat something. I have to wash it down every time. I want to make a story now where somebody gets told that, but for some reason, their brain as a young kid, because you know, you, you're kind of dumb as a kid, but you're also really smart because you can absorb so much information. Yeah. But sometimes you can absorb it too much in one direction. Pretty much. Yeah. So he's like, "Yo, calm down. You need to." Take more sips to avoid problems. Like he says it in that exact way, and like your whole life is just you carrying around a bottle of emergency water just in <laughs> case something fucking crazy happens. And a fanny Hold pack on. <laughs> as a pop away bot lid. I had a Pokemon <laughs> fanny pack. You're falling from you know a fucking so, skyscraper with no. What's y'all's most nostalgic McDonald's toy? Mine has to be when they had the Yu Gi Oh cards. Dude, yeah, the the because that was the most excited I've ever. The Millennial been for a, Shield yeah. was the one, right? Yeah, Dude, that, what a dope fucking card too. Because well, that's the, when you the wanted. Millennial they had items other ones. are amazing. Yeah. yeah, there was the Mac, there was the burger one. And I was like, Mom, ask them if they can give us, you know, give us a couple extra. And she's like, Son, I'm not, please. And they did. <laughs> what was it's uh, just a card? It's yeah. a little different from like the Burger King, like oh, Dragon Ball Z toys, because like that was a little more involved. To be fair, oh, you remember the Burger King Pokemon ones, and then I the think, gold ones. Yeah. No, not the gold ones. The actual, like, you can get They came in little... Actually, were the gold ones Burger King or McDonald's? Burger King. Burger King. Okay. But these, McDonald's these were in, like, cards, plastic little hip clips things. You know, you can clip them on your keychain, and you can pop them open. And they were, like... Um, Did you just talk about hip clips? And I said hip. 
Hip. Oh, okay. Well, hit clips was also. A, but you know they. Had, but they, 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 there, there were some plush ones. There was one. You know, with the, there there was a Voltorb where you can spin up the top and let it go. You don't remember that? I don't remember that at all. I don't remember that at all either. But hey, quick question because I tried googling this and I don't know how the fuck to Google it. I'm sure I can at least explain this well enough to you guys. Do you remember the old cards that you would get that had like they were square and they had like rounded edges and whenever you'd be holding it, you you could twist it and they still have them. I just don't know what you call that design like what, what, what do you call the, that to where when you when yeah i mean they still use it like crazy but where you when you view it a different thing it'll completely change so if it, it, maybe it's like a pikachu and you put it to the side and suddenly it's a rachu it's, I don't, it's I, something oh crap. i just oh. yeah that's what i'm saying like i kept thinking oh maybe a lithograph i'm like nope no, that's, that's not, not it, it. I, that's, so, that's where my mind went too but it's something similar to that i had pokemon cards that did that but they weren't rounded no, like, he's, he's, he's talking about just he's, like the big squares. Like, hell, it was, they even it was put only on, art. They they put them on T-shirts in the oh, 90s. Oh yeah, I know. You're, okay, yeah, it's like the painting we or the painting we Those, have in our living room. That's like, yeah. If you look at it from one angle, it's fall, but if yes. you look at it from another, it's winter. Which is a well, dope painting. Honestly. Hey, I, I like really, that. I really, I really like thinking that about those right now. I'm getting chill bumps because the noise of kids the, putting their fingernails oh, on. I love them. it. Mm. No, dude, I I have like PTSD now. Yeah, dude, I can't. You have childhood PTSD. To answer your original question though, I can't find this toy. Um, basically, we would go um, one at least once a summer. We would, they would try to take us to Six Flags, me and Seth, when we were younger. Mm. And yeah, you were up so poor. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't it's, think people I, ask how cheap Six Flags is. I only only bring that up because I did not go to Six Flags until I was sixteen. Well, this was also Ed too. I was where probably, Ed had money, but I also I didn't live with him full time. Ed, Ed had M U N N Y money, but um, he was rolling it. I'm kidding. But Ed's a nice guy. But we went to McDonald's one morning for breakfast, and it was the same Richmond Road McDonald's, and we could play in the play area. And we went there for breakfast. And <laughs> I got a story related to breakfast at McDonald's, but keep going. I'll I bring it up in a minute. I don't think this is actually a McDonald's toy, but for some reason, when you said mcdonald's like nostalgic thing i was like what is this thing now i can't think of it it was a pokemon you actually might remember seth having this it was a clamshell design that was probably about three inches by four inches big it was really pale yellow and you could flip it open and it had a little scenery in there and yeah, you can put those the, weren't from mcdonald's i know that but i'm saying i remember playing with it at mcdonald's which is what triggered that immediate thing now i can't think of what that item is no it was a little like was it was it dolly no no they made poke they made pokemon ones they yeah, were they, they were they were like there was a light blue there was a yellow there was a pink they were real um and you pop them open and one was like a beach where you have little mini squirtles yeah and, and then there was one that had a bridge over stream which was the one it was essentially had. those same Little girls' toys, but made for. That's, um, what are the girls' toys called of that? I don't fucking I don't know. know. I don't it's, know. It's, it's called. like I, I guess I, I mean, kind of know what you're talking about, but I'm thinking about balls that pop open. I'm thinking fucking Bakugan. It's, it's and not, I know that that's ball, not at all like, what you're It's like about. a little square. It's almost like a jewelry box looking shape. And you pop them open, and like a little scenery pops out. You know, there's a little. It's all plastic, but you know. Yeah, sure. Way. I understand that. Yeah, it is, dude. It's called. Uh, I just found it. Let me see if I can find the exact same one. They're called. They're Polly Pockets. And you can actually connect is that what them. The, I mean, I remember the Polly Pocket commercial, but I never, I, I didn't know what the fuck it was. Yeah, this is, um, let me see if I just opened actually. Oh, the good old industry of taking a. That's the one we had. Where, and, and oh. Yeah, it was like a little yeah, Pokemon center. I'll and they see. could connect. I don't think, I don't think you guys Nah, man, it's cool. People can Google Polly Pocket. Yeah, Google Pokemon Polly Pocket, and it's like that. And yeah, they can connect. Um, but all, the, all the good old making girl dude, versions of, or guy versions of girl toys, girl toys like yeah. the queasy bake did you ever see <laughs> yeah i was mad we never actually had a guy branded easy bake that's what the queasy bake that's was. what the queasy Wasn't bake that was to, like, make, make like nasty like yeah, looking but, snacks yeah, but i mean it tasted fucking fire boy because it was uh again that was the one harry of those, potter potion set with some bullshit by the way that stuff never tasted good can we here, uh -huh. here's the thing I, at blaze is maybe similar because i know that norval is a penny pincher and always has been but most of my life of the toys that people remember from their childhood were not that I owned them. It's They're more that friends. I lived through my friends. Like you'd be like, dude, I can't wait to go to fucking Adam's house because he's got this. And oh God. yeah, no, um, it was like our one of my friends. I still remember he had all the Street <clears throat> Shark toys. We used to go over there and play Street Sharks. Um, video games. I didn't I get to play video games as, until I was a close. I was a teenager. I was a man. <laughs> well, no, I got to play. I mean, I played the Genesis when I was at my. I remember playing Genesis when I was at yeah. little pals play school. And then I was really young on that. But, like, anytime getting to play video games, it was going, like, over to my uncle's house. They had a PS1. Was yeah, I remember, like, even when I first started hanging out with Blaze, which has been so goddamn long ago now, uh, he was still, like, relatively new to... I mean, not completely new. He had played Kingdom Hearts, but, again, I think at your cousin's house, right? No, or your Kingdom uncle's? Hearts had a PS2. Okay. I, I, you played I like 96% of it on a... 
Yeah, but either way, I know that there was that plenty, was like the only game that there was, was a ton legit. of PS2 games that you never played well, because you were like, I, "What's God of War? Can I borrow God no, of War?" No, I only okay. had like three different PlayStation uh, Two games. It was Tony Hawk's Underground, um, Kingdom Hearts, fucking two. Eric Sparrow. Yeah, that's yeah. coming up again and again. Kingdom today. Hearts Two, and then um, I had Budokai. Okay, so that was pretty Wait, much original it. Budokai. What? Well, no, Budokai Two. Budokai I played Budokai one, one, but I had Budokai Budokai Two is best one. I had Budokai Two. Roster wise, fucking fire. That game had. Every character. Was that the, that was or was like, it Budokai 3, actually? No, Budokai 2 had the, one of the best rosters. But Budokai 2 also introduced the board game campaign, didn't it? I am. Where it was like a weird game. Like a, it Dude, was, I'm not going to lie. All those games just meld together. They do, yeah. But see, I was very Except similar. Except Legacy of <clears throat> Goku 2. Like, that game was amazing. My dad played games, of course. So I had like... We got the Sega Genesis whenever he got the PlayStation 1. And I normally didn't get to play the PlayStation 1. It was very rare. So most of the time, me playing games was going over to Cody's house... Cody uh, McGinnis? No, Bellamy. Uh, oh, dang, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Hanging out with my boy because he lived right down the street from me. He, he was one of my first friends that I got to live kind of like. I, I Kind of like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, his dad and his mom would kind of buy him, a lot, not everything, but a lot. And he had a bunch of cool stuff. I, you know, I didn't have a bike until we, me and him started hanging out. And I essentially was like, Mom, if you do not buy me a bike, I'm essentially going to commit child suicide. But not really. Our bikes always got stolen. But it's the same state for a child. Yeah. Our, our bikes always got stolen. And then one time my dad stole my bike back <laughs> because I had this blue, I'll never forget it. It was a blue mountain bike when those things were all the rage back in like the early 2000s. Blue mountain bikes were a thing? Uh, yeah, no, no, mountain. no, I'm talking about mountain bikes. Mountain bikes specifically. Like when you were a kid in the early 2000s, a mountain bike was the way to go. No, dude, you need a pegs. mongoose, man. Yeah. No, mongoose I was going to say, I was gonna say that is too, but I'm talking about for our or specific huffy. group because we already had those. And then um, somebody stole my mongoose with pegs, and I had the front and back pegs. And Ooh, uh, mine didn't even match. <laughs> <laughs> mine too. I was like, my friend would be like, I got new pegs. Can I have one of those, please? But my dad, for my birthday, bought me and Seth a new mountain bike. Because, uh, you know, Seth at that age, I think I was maybe 10. And Seth was at that age like where he would throw a fit because he didn't understand birthdays. And, like, he had to get a present, too. <laughs> uh, oh. And <laughs> you know, I can't talk shit because that might have happened to me too, but I don't know because we didn't get much. Honestly, well, Christmas for me was always like if grandpa bought us something, we were going to be doing all right. If grandpa yeah. didn't, but his, it was wildly inconsistent. An Grand, orange, a well, pair no, no, of socks, no, no. something from it, his childhood. No, it'd be that we wouldn't get <laughs> a damn. in the socks. <laughs> I would say that, but we would get things that we needed for certain Christmases. And then, like, one of the best Christmases ever, I think it was my fifth birthday because we were still in the trailer. Uh, grandpa bought us me and trace a go-kart full on and, and a nice one and we were like what the fuck because we had never seen anything remotely you close know what's crazy to this. is go-karts back then weren't <laughs> that cheap but they or weren't that expensive but they were really expensive to kids go-karts back then were like 250 dollars i don't know how much grandpa one. paid for it it felt like he bought us a ferrari yeah because like because that it, to me that's what it was i was like yo what Spe- the fuck is this also, we took terrible care of that shit. But to of go course. back to my main, to go back to your point, actually, I think I sidetracked. Hold on, before you. you go off there, I want to tell a quick story about. Oh, you God. said grandpas and Christmas. I was thinking about my grandmas at Christmas. This is I, I'll never forget this one memory. Before we sidetrack, I'm gonna sidetrack a little bit. <laughs> I want to side. It's it's very quick story. But my grandma passed away. I was in third grade, so this is somewhere between birth and third grade. This yeah. happened, and I still remember okay. this. I opened up a package at Christmas because we'd always do Christmas at our house, and it was like a striped shirt. And I was like, oh, I like this shirt so much. I hated that shirt, but it wasn't a Christmas present for me. Somebody accidentally put my name on it. I remember back then at that age, I was having to fake, oh, I like it. It's this shirt. I like it. It's my favorite color. And they're like, that's not for you. And I was like, oh, thank God. Take this shirt away from me. <laughs> and I was just like, hold on. Did you say that to them? Or no, were you just kind no. of internally screaming like, oh, fucking I was like, God. I wanted games and like, or whatever, you know, a kid wanted or like uh, Pokemon cards. But I'm sitting here thinking like, how at that age did I know to fake happiness on this gift? <laughs> to not hurt someone's feelings. To not hurt someone's feelings. I think it's empathy, yeah. But then again, you know what's real weird about that situation is that when you have that situation, like when you have that happen, you're like, I know that I should be thankful for this. Definitely for us. And I, I know there's plenty of people that are like that. But it's like, Anything you get, like even if you got a toy and it really wasn't anything you wanted, like it's still a fucking toy. It's new. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> but you just kind of deal with that. And the and it's that you don't even contextually, you don't even really know how good or bad your Christmas was as a kid until you get to school and realize what everybody else got. Pretty, or if you had close much. friends. Yeah. We lived out in the middle of the country. So again, it was only Cody Bellamy. Dude. It's the only friend I had in, in immediate reach. Seeing what Big Seth would get for Christmas compared to us was nuts. <laughs> Yeah, I could see. I that. remember, like, I remember one year he got he got not only did he get Xbox 360 games right after the Xbox 360 came out, he got a brand new computer for his room, 
and a stereo and like tons of cash. And I'm just like, <laughs> I can't remember. Where I, I can't remember where I got that. I think I got. I think I got one Xbox 360 game from Dad. And Ed and Mom, I think that was the year that me and Seth got those like um, those lightsabers, the mm-hmm. like the replica ones. Yep. I still don't. Remember, I don't know what happened to mine. I don't know either. I think Seth still has it. He probably does. I do not. I do not remember what happened to mine. I remember it was gone way before Mom passed away. God, them bitches were expensive. No, they weren't. They're a hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred. I know, but that's a hundred dollars back way before minimum wage was even close to what it is now. I guess no. Well, yeah, I, I almost said ten years ago. That was not ten years ago. It's way almost, more than that. Yeah, um, fifteen, tw- probably maybe more. almost sixteen, seventeen years ago. Yeah. yeah. Mo- the the value of money thing is is so weird when you because it's like it makes contextually trying to figure out how much something actually costs so hard because you have a great frame of mind of how much something was worth. Like I know what the value of a dollar was in like the two thousands and like even some of the nineties. But when you like when you have people from their eighties or seventies being like, you know what that cost me whenever I was your age, and then they go forty seven dollars. Like I don't know what the fuck forty seven dollars was back yeah. then. Somebody breaks it. So I saw somebody break it down on tw- Twitter really, really well. That like back in the eighties, uh, uh, the dollar was essentially worth four dollars now. Well, yeah. Um, uh, it was. It was like that. <laughs> inflation's a bitch. Yeah. Well, when I was born, my dad was making minimum wage at like four dollars. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like when we were born, it was like three fifty or four twenty-five. Still, probably finance a house through that. Mm. <sighs> Who my, the fuck knows? To be honest, yeah, I, I feel like that's something that dad, gets brought up way too much. But I don't know if that's true. Or my not. dad, before he was a postal carrier, literally threw newspapers, and my mom was a secretary, and they had a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house. Well, I mean, was that the house that over there? Debt still yeah. existed. They could have been up to their assholes in debt still. I mean, my dad technically not not, did. not true debt though. Not, <laughs> not, not debt. true debt. No, yeah, about that. They weren't true debt. Actually, no, that was true debt. <laughs> that's that's true debt. <laughs> That's that's real debt. <laughs> true debt's something that. Hold on, I want to go back through your debt. So no, when your no, house hey, gets when your house on. gets foreclosed, hey, hey, that's, that's true debt. <laughs> oh, so that's my grand, true. I my forgot your debt. Not house. true debt because you plan on paying it off. I mean, maybe not. I might. <laughs> then then that it vision. becomes true debt. It evolves. It's like a Pokemon. You neglect it for a little bit and it becomes it something becomes else. True debt. Oh, would that be a cool Pokemon idea? No a Pokemon. You neglect it. It becomes like a fairy that becomes a dark type. No, no, no it'd be neglected. Eevee. You neglect it and it becomes a ghost type. That's how you. That's how you finally bring in ghost type. You use the brick stone. Yeah, yeah, that would be. Hey, have you actually seen any of the people that do the really cool mock-ups of like what a ghost type might yeah. look? There's one that had like money oh, yeah. flaps on it that looks fucking dope. There's a, the dragon type EV I saw looked really cool. Yeah, there's a couple of them. There, I mean, there was a ground type one that was kind of an interesting idea. You breaking fake skeleton's jaws over here? <laughs> that's Good like, lord, that's like my jaw. How fucking insensitive are you? This, this is this is me. Look. Oh. <laughs> I hope that came through on the microphone. I hope it did too. That's I was telling y'all. That's why I have to. I have. I'm supposed to sleep with somebody. I have TMJ. So like my jaw is all fucked. You, you know, uh, your wife has it. She can't suck your dick because of. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, are you going down on Andy? And I was like, <laughs> oh my god! How do I punch you in the head? Here, here's the trick, Saul. Every married man eventually their wife becomes TMJified. <laughs> it just happens. I can, I'm, I'm kidding. Obviously. Hannah does have real problems, so I don't <laughs> shit on her too much. But it is funny because one of the long running stories within men that are married is like, oh, my wife says her jaw hurts. Oh, but I she got that TMJ. Will, that will stop her from fucking eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's it's funny what they always land on as the as the idea of like well they still can do that though it's like it's not the goddamn same but at the same you, time I can picture you sitting there while eating with him like that's a pretty big coney cheese dog you got there <laughs> like well, you eat like, that huh so no problems with that <laughs> yeah but see again I always hear those things and I know that they're really just jokes but it's like do you want her to fucking bite your dick chew and like relax her jaw or do you just want her to go come back up let her jaw relax for a second. Then go back down. It's not going to be an enjoyable blowjob anyway, so might as well just call it fucking quits and be like, "Hey, look, they got jaw problems. Whatever, I'll deal with it." Speaking of blowjobs, I was telling Andy the other. <laughs> Speaking I was of blowjobs, telling Andy the other night, like I told her this before too. I could never, like, if I was ever. Hold on, hold on, real quick. From from McDonald's toys to childhood to Pokemon to blowjobs. This is what the podcast has, is about. This has come full. full but uh, if I was, I'm if, just glad we stopped talking about Christmas before I got depressed. Start talking about mine, <laughs> y'all. Uh, I, I was I was actually wanting to get towards that. See, we're we can always cycle away. back. Yeah, we're gonna have to because uh, we gotta hear so, well, about we gotta hear Saul depressing. giving a blowjob. No, I was gonna say I, if I was gay, I could never, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could never give a blowjob because, <laughs> but I, I could get them all day long. <laughs> well, <laughs> I was just saying, like hypocrite. I like, I uh, hey. I like, I gag and I, I like, I sometimes I hit my gag reflex when I'm brushing my teeth. I throw up. Like, yeah, 
Dude, my gag wait. reflex. Like, Kiki's I, listening to this. Like, boy, you I'm just almost, don't even dude, know. Yeah, I'm getting a little. Get I'm getting like a little like gaggy thinking about it. But like, I can't. thinking about dick in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> just makes me. Talking about my gag reflex specifically, <laughs> but yeah, like, like ask Amy. There's been times like, um, literally last Saturday morning, uh, I was like brushing my teeth. I like, I like just something hit, like triggered, like me to throw up because like the way I was brushing my teeth. <laughs> you got triggered, and like Annie was like, "You okay?" And I walked in. I'm like, "What are we doing for breakfast?" <laughs> okay, we got Danny donuts. <laughs> or Sunday actually. So you threw up and then went and ate some food. Yeah, like it, it's not like good. It's not like At I least I it's not sick. debilitating. It's just like it's just something that like it, it wants it. I wonder if it's because I don't have tonsils. Like, I wonder if that has something to do with it. No, that would make it easier, dude. I'm about to say. What? Seems like there's less tonsils resistance, are, right? Aren't they so minimal in size like that? Oh, dude, I don't know. I still have mine. I but still have mine. Too. All I know is that they they fucking suck and I get strep throat too often. Tonsils and... Well, I still get, get strep throat shot. at least once a year. Yeah, because you don't get your flu shot. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I still get strep throat so at least once a year. So many callbacks in this episode. There is. Only real fans will know. Now, did you? This will be the reboot. Did you get your double up flu shot? You know, we were talking about since other people. Yes, it's called it's called double herd immunity. Double herd for immunity. those who can't get it, you have you to from get the it double twice, herpes. so that you have twice the chance of not putting it on to other people. Well, good. You've got to get it three times because this room. So, because the the what? This room. This room. Oh yeah, that's yeah. right. You've got a triple stack up. That's true. Shit. But did, could you imagine if actually getting vaccines is based off of the population that couldn't do it? Like, well, if there's 1,300 people in this country that can't do it, then you've got to get 13. Or it wouldn't be that because you're not going to come in contact with the, all 1,300 in the country. But let's just say that there was like 37 people in Texarkana that you have a chance of brushing up against who would can't you, get so, them. So that would mean that would mean there would be a system in place that means that you would, if you could not get vaccines due to actually your health and not your beliefs, you would have to have that on your ID. And anytime you traveled, your, your rate of people with... No vac- no no vaccinations would go up, so more people have to get vaccinations in your area. Yeah, that would get weird. That's yeah. almost like a way of identifying people and keeping a log on them also. <laughs> That's true. Have y'all thought about getting burner phones just so you can kind of try and feel like you're actually... He, my problem is I like technology too much, but it's like your phone fucking is just constantly monitoring Dude, I'm you. pretty sure there's a satellite so you, orbiting us that can and of zoom course, in on oh us. No, hey, there's nothing. Like, there's no privacy you know, anymore. I, you know, I turn all my crap off on it. You know, the supposedly works to help. But the other day, I was there's this guy at work that really likes Star Wars. And, you know, he's an older dude. He, I mean, mm-hmm. but he... At Star Wars beanie, all that junk. I was like, man, do you have a... Star Wars Christmas sweater. You seem like a guy that'd have a Star Wars Christmas sweater. <laughs> and then one showed up. And uh, then sure enough, an advertisement about Geekly sweaters. And On then, Facebook, I bet, too. Yeah. Of, yep, that's what... Fa- Facebook is Facebook one of people. the worst offenders. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, really I'm bad. About, I'm about done. <clears throat> but, I don't know. The thing it's about like art because, you know, you've got friends that have moved off. and I've always wanted... Yeah, but I've always wanted to get a burner, too, just so I can, like, instead of hanging up you on get somebody, the, you just break the fucking you phone, like you sur- see in shows like Breaking Bad and hey, shit. You can get the they Supreme, so you get the supreme burner phone. What the fuck is that? A just, Supreme uh, brand. Uh, yeah, they just put their logo on a burner phone and it's a hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, a Supreme brand? Yeah, you know what it is. It's, yeah, it's, I a, it's a big you. red square that says Supreme. They put they put it on a crowbar and Weeboos the crowbar is one hundred and fifty dollars. They put it on what a brick the hell? too. Weeboos love it. Uh, Supreme brick is yeah. This this one right here. You've seen that logo before? I can't see it. Bring your phone. But up. yeah, you're gonna see that price tag on there too for that one single brick. One hundred and seventy dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, you want to buy that brick for one hundred and seventy? <laughs> put it on the podcast. What, what set. would you even do that for? Ah, Dude, I'm telling you, room good. decorations. People, it's it's hype beast. That's all it is. It's like people will go out. There's a sweater I have uh, that says sheep across it, and that's that's what it's referencing. It's in this. It's in the Supreme font. Everything. It's it was made by Idubs. Um, but yeah, I remember yeah. that pink Gran Turismo um, hoodie at PSX. <laughs> yeah. That was a pretty cool hoodie. Yeah. Was it like... Well, it was pink, limited. Like, it was some brand that's... Was it like Vaporwave? I think it's... No, it's Anti-Social Social Club. That is kind of cool. I like the sound of that. Yeah. PSX, is, podcast, PSX is fun. Really, it kind of brings into like... Uh, I mean, I know that this is really specifically oriented towards us and people who live in this area, which <clears throat> we don't try and broadcast what we do around the people here that much anyway, to be dead honest. Talk about um, like our work? But no, I'm talking no. about like just around Texas Canada. I don't. We don't really do a lot of networking to try and get local people to listen to our stuff because we don't care. I mean, we have we found an audience from everywhere, yeah. and that's what we kind of. I like that actually. I I appreciate more that we have a lot of people to talk to that are completely from different areas. The have fact a there's potential a... to be so different in what their day to day lives is. So day to day lives are so the way they view the world so different. But <clears throat> what I was going to say 
is that conventions are really fun, but we have so few of them around here. And talking about like spooky con tomorrow would be one of the things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the day after we're recording this, but still, uh, when you're doing something like spooky con, I would, or really it's, it's just all hype con. I'm, Cause it's all under the hype con umbrella. Yeah. I do hope that that picks up steam partially. Cause I think that I, I applaud Jesse for trying to do something yeah. like that. Uh, and I think anybody really should be able to, if you really appreciate where you came from and can view past the, the teen angst that all pop punk bands go into of like, fuck my hometown thing. I don't really understand the point of all that. Like it makes for either. great, it makes for great like anthemic songs when you're a teenager and you're like, fuck the world, man. Um, but as like an actual adult that's moving to it, it's like, no, this is a perfectly fine place to live. As long as you live in a, a, a moderately good immediate neighborhood. I mean, that's everywhere. Then you're good. Yeah. yeah that's I mean, everywhere. Exactly. Every and city, that is everywhere. That's, every city has bad areas. It's like when people say, oh my God, crime's so bad here. Crime is bad in almost every city. I will say one place or near around us that has, crime actually has gone up <clears throat> pretty badly is Shreveport. Oh no, Shreveport's always been bad. No, it's going up. It's, it's, I was reading, like, it's been about six months now, but like, their their crime rate alone has almost tripled in just the last five years. Oh, uh, one of the, the things radio we need to start doing. I used to listen to in the morning, so I'd talk show stuff, every, you have news from there, and every day in the morning on the way to, um, it'd be, It'd be like, oh, Murder. if you have any info on this shooting, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, that my like joke, every day. my joke for Shreveport is that there's the daily murder. Like every morning, you oh, yeah, wake up would. to a murder, uh, <laughs> or at least someone dying for some reason other than natural causes. But uh, one thing we need to start doing is when we have these things, we are going wildly off on tangents. We need to try and hold them until the conversation's gone. But I think some people might like that, though. I mean, but maybe, anyway, but it, it makes the com- crime rating is getting worse. <sighs> but where I was getting at with that is that conventions in smaller cities has got to be one of the fucking hardest things to do. Like I'm proud of Jesse. Cause what we, what just happened is that our city, Texarkana, um, both cities actually together have endorsed hot con for next year. Mm-hmm. And they are, so they're partnered. So here moving forward, every event that, they, that he does funded by our will, city. will be partially funded by the city. The city will help uh, secure locations and stuff like that. Um, I and feel bad we're not for us. Be- Home Zone Theater is going to be the place for Hopcon 2020. Oh, I, good. Yeah, so awesome. Way be- and I mean, as far as I know, it's 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 sealed in. But to be fair, Jesse, I hope I ain't le- leaking your stuff out there. But my point being, it's got to be something so hard to do because I feel like every place, unless it's just like Dallas big or Shreveport big or Little Rock big, where they have enough people to kind of just overcome jadedness, mm-hmm. it gets to that point of like, well, it's here. This town sucks, in my opinion, not mine, but you know, for the individual person. It's like, well, this town sucks. So anything that's going to happen in this town has to immediately suck as well. My, I have to end that little snippet there, at least of that conversation for me, is to say that uh, I actually kind of feel bad about us not going to Spooky Con tomorrow because we have. I mean, I'm going. going. I just, I, yeah, I, I, we can't I didn't have guests, time to do for that. For those that don't know, HypeCon, we've said it on mm-hmm. Triangle Square now for the past two years. We've been guests at HypeCon and we've been, we've had our own panel. Or our own booth, and last year we had, a, or this past one we had our own panel with a, a, a couple of other local streamers and gamers, and it was really fun. Um, but except for when Saul was trying to get out and get that burger, he was immediately like, "I'm fucking hungry." It wasn't a meal; it was like three hours almost, <laughs> or two hours. But uh, I'm just saying that you were quick to get out once it came down to like, "I right, boy, I need some food." No, everybody did my biggest pet peeve, and we all still do it. But it's like when we're walking around somewhere, we just stop. Oh, and yeah. we're just talking. You we're have not like a hundred biggest pet peeves, though. I do. To be fair, like doesn't everybody? 300 biggest pet peeves. But I've got about five. <laughs> well, but, I'm talking about, but you use that like it's hyperbolic language. Yeah. You you say it's your biggest pet peeve, even though it really doesn't bother you. I say it's, that, just, it's just that it bothers you. So to give it emphasis in what you're saying at the moment, you try and inflate it. Like, this is one yeah. of my biggest pet peeves. And maybe, no. maybe I go, this will, is number three. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe y'all will listen and we'll change it because it's like we'll be walking in Target. We'll just stop to talk. Like we can we can walk and get to our destination while talking and walking. But hype call, we were doing that like where we would walk like ten feet and we would stop. Like guys, I'm hungry. We're all hungry. Let's just keep walking and talk while we walk. I wasn't part of that, thankfully, because I wasn't. Well, leaving. there was yeah. stuff there wanted to look at, and that's why they. No, were no, no, no. It wasn't that. Yeah, you dickweed. No, no. There like, was local artists. We were literally all in a circle. And we just kept walking and stopping. We never went off to other booths. <clears throat> Speaking of which, there wasn't really any booths around us that we had already been to. Um, there was because there was hot sauce and then the bakery. But, um, but to go on to what we were talking about with hometown stuff, what I can't stand about our hometown, and it's like this for every hometown that's smaller in size that tries to be bigger in areas, is when there's a new restaurant opening up that everybody says is the best thing that has ever happened in this town, and it is constantly busy. Raisin Cane's did it. Raisin Cane's was one that I actually really enjoy. Raisin Cane's food. I was not going to go nowhere near that place. Well, Taco Tico 
Taco Ruin T- the traffic. Taco Tico. If you, if people, if you're interested in this conversation, I have a good comparison for that one. Google Texas Boulevard. I have a good comparison for this one though, to give at least people the frame of mind for what it is, because people saw this across the whole United States during the big middle of the, the Popeye's chicken sandwich craze. Yeah. Uh, and that was when Kurt was on, we talked about that, but, uh, what was happening Never there, people, people kept seeing, and I'm sure it's, here's the bigger thing is it's not uncommon in plenty of places. Anyway, the bigger the city, I think it sounds weird for people to be like, well, of course there's a long line everywhere, but it, Follow us here for a second. If you're from a somewhat smaller city or town and you're not used to going through drive through places and there being a full line out of the driveway all the way through down the road, this that's what people started seeing road. at Popeye's, right? Uh, and we had it here happen at our Popeye's on state line. There was literally a whole thing of cars that were going out waiting for a chicken sandwich that they were out of. There's nothing but, that good for me. Like, I'm not going to sit there in my car and block traffic. Yeah, to, at, at Taco either. Tico, which is a place that's come and gone before and came and went under for a probably ton gonna, of different reasons. Probably going to go again soon. But yeah, it was just literally cars all the way down a major highway. Or I'm not going to say highway, but a major road for us. Yeah, it, a, it's, it's, it's a highly it's state line. trafficked road. I mean, it was Texas Boulevard. No, it went from Texas Boulevard, Boulevard to into state, state line. Line, for which people, is a like yeah. quarter of a mile, maybe. Yeah, well, I'd say frame of reference is like a, I'd say a quarter of a mile. Yeah, sounds fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it was ridiculous, and there were so many wrecks there. The fact that police had to stop and tell people you can't stop in a roadway, go. Like there was people because I worked at CVS. For those that don't know, I don't know if I said that in the last episode. I think that was the episode we didn't air. But uh, <laughs> airing our dirty laundry there, Saul. Yes, there but, were shit stains on the underwear, and I was trying to hide it. I worked at the CVS. It's right there on that main road, and like there was cops out there with blow horns. They were saying, "Go, do not stop," because people were literally just stopping in this in this. They didn't want to lose their spot. Yeah, for tacos and the taco <laughs> burger, which I thought was gonna was sounded amazing until somebody was like, "Yeah, it's like taco meat on buns." I'm like, "What the fuck?" Uh, and I, I think I said it before, it's a fucking man, which. Mexican style. I call it a sloppy joke. Hey, it's pretty good. You though. have more respect for sloppy joes than I do. I to me, sloppy joe can mean barbecue pulled pork. I, wet wet barbecue pulled pork. Mm. Wet barbecue? Yeah. What do you do? You, you rub it on the labia a little bit? I don't bit like first? dry pulled pork. <laughs> okay. I heard you. Yes. But uh I don't like dry pulled you pork. Slide you slide a finger like in there? Your pork. I like I like duck meat. <laughs> <laughs> Inside reference. Anyway. Um but, no, but I mean, one of the things that I think is weird about that, to be fair, to the, why that that shit happens in smaller towns, I don't, I don't know that I'll say it's it's smaller cities or towns that are trying to get bigger or whatever, because we are we're because of the fact that we're a twin city, we are bigger than we would otherwise be. No, we uh, are, but, but we're not on the same level of like, say, even are we, are we even big as Shreveport? Uh, population wise, we're pretty close. Yeah, uh, if you don't count Bozier. Uh, and technically, people yeah, consider, but Shreveport Bozier is kind of like Dallas Fort Worth. Yeah. If you live in either of those areas or ever heard of them, you have probably more likely heard of Dallas Fort Worth area because it's a big. Um, that's actually the name of the airport. Um, DFW. But yeah, it's just a huge area, and that happens around plenty of places. It's kind of like when people say um, that they live in Oregon, but they don't, act, or Portland in Oregon, but they don't. Really, they live in the surrounding areas, but you call it Portland anyway. That's like, I mean, Joe lives in Richland, mm-hmm. Texas, yeah. and he says he lives in Dallas. Yeah, which he, makes sense because it's, it's a suburb of Dallas. Yeah. Uh, so it's not, it's well, not, it's like people who live in New Boston here. A lot of them will say they live in Texarkana. Wait, that's Nash. a straight up. That's a straight up. That one's far out. Here. Now, if yeah. you say you live in Pleasant Grove, Pleasant Grove is just a suburb. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, but, well, in general. Just the, but people do it. You live in the Texarkana area, to be fair. It's yeah, just there's so much in, room here that it feels like that's far away for us. Uh, but anyway, what I was getting at is when you're dealing with things like that, bigger cities have the benefit of already having all these established places, established places to work that are interesting, uh, bars and stuff that are interesting, different weird movie theaters or performance arts or bands and a music scene. Whereas you get a, a place like us that tries to have all of those things to different varying, varying levels of success. I actually think we have okay performance art stuff here. Um, we have the But that's theater. not something that, that we have a lot of interest in personally. Um, well, we have the Perot Theater. What else do we have? I mean, we have other. I mean, the, the school puts on plays at different venues. Sometimes, it's not. if That's you like, if you like a different, <clears throat> if you like country music, there's plenty of places to go. Yeah, so I mean, that, so varying I levels mean, Scott, of success. Like for Scotty every says city. stuff all the time. Um, I was gonna say, um, what's it called? Well, hold on, let's Whiskey pull it back River. down to where it's not so sex can specific. Where I'm going with it is that in any city like that, they're gonna have that are a little bit smaller that have trying to get their foot into certain doors, they're going to do it to various levels of success. But one of the things that tends to happen is like when people think about development and how you want to develop an area, it's uh, housing, yeah, food, 
And if you can get people who are living there and you can get food where people who are living in that area will automatically more than likely go to an area that's close to them just due to convenience. And then you can, it's kind of like what they're doing with our downtown, but it's like you get people there in housing, then you get restaurants there to get people to kind of stick around there and to potentially have a date night there. Then you do things like movies or, or quick activities like bowling that you can put in a similar area. And then you just keep going from there. And it normally goes up in like bigger cities like Dallas to more interesting things like actual venues for bands to come and play at or comedians to come we and lack do stuff. A lot of but those. we don't, we don't have that. Yeah. We, we, we sorely lack in venues. We sorely lack in a lot of things, but I feel like that happens in a lot of towns. There's one area. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, I got it. I got it. Just keep on talking. Anyway. There's one area in particular that I feel like every town ends up failing in somehow, some way, because of that. Just, Just keep on talking. Up, keep on talking. Don't break the break the immersion. <laughs> Don't break the flow. But yeah, I, I feel like as much as you're saying like it's it's every hometown, as much as those places or people complain about their hometowns, a lot of the time, I guess, I, I should say, I'm in a leadership thing here, partially because my boss asked me to, but I'm glad because it's interesting and kind of fun. But you learn that essentially every town is the same situation of, People complaining about their hometown, but nobody wanting to do anything to make their area better. Like, they just expect your place to just be magically better. Yeah, you don't vote the right people into office that actually want to do that. Well, that, you don't, you, you don't put your own, you don't risk your own living or livelihood by opening a risky business that could be really good for the area, but it also means that you may not make money. Speaking of which, I want to see if we can remember that conversation, because I actually have some big news <clears throat> I cannot say on the air. I think I told you about. If I say Genghis Grill area, do you remember anything about that? Nope. Okay. I'll tell you guys about that in a little bit. Okay. Well, we'll yeah. after that. I'm just saying that because you said risky business. Yeah. And this you. is a very risky thing. Ooh. But, but, ooh. Is, is Tom Cruise going to be there? I hate you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, but... I guess my more curious thing is I wonder how many people listen to us that are actually from smaller cities and smaller areas that yeah, relate us, a little bit more to that because I do feel like that conversation may fall a little flat or feel a little foreign to people that live in big enough areas though the other thing that we've always talked about that ties into that is um, how part of what's great about where we are is that we are you're within three hours of a lot of interesting places yeah Dallas Shreveport Technically, Tyler, hot, um, springs, hot springs, yeah, Longview. I wouldn't say Longview is really interesting. I mean, but it's just they you're, a, you're within a lot of places. They have a second and shake. You have that's hot springs and Little Rock. Um, Little Rock, yeah, yeah. But anyway, when you when you're dealing with that, when we live here, it's like we all go there and go. Oh man, I wish I could live in Dallas because it's so much better. But then what happens? People like Joe move to Dallas. What happens? Does he do any of the stuff that people w go to Dallas from here to do? Oh, Not absolutely. Really. Oh, absolutely, he does. I mean, he may very well be an out oh, and prove no, my point dude, entirely wrong, but he, I feel like Joe sits at home a lot. No, dude. If it's the uh, weekend, I haven't had a chance I, to play Destiny with Joe until like three days ago because it, on the weekends that I'm off, he is not on. He went to a Harry Potter-themed bar like two weekends ago. Well, and, good for him. Yeah, dude, I'm just like, lucky Proving you. Proving me wrong. And, Color my ass And they get Maybe them, them fun-ass lime scooters that we don't have. Yeah, Put them in the extra can. We need those here. That would be one of the best things to have here. At least, at least two. Do really what do you have them need? <laughs> you can literally walk our entire downtown. Makes it easier. I mean, I'm not, it I'm would be easier. It makes it easier to run away from the homeless people. <laughs> yeah, downtown. You don't need it. That's what I wish. I wish our city renovated downtown really well, but they're not ever going to. Now they're working on it, but it's just a. Uh, is it going to? Is it going to go to the extremes we want? It's well, there, always one a business lot of at a time. Stuff with that though. Downtown. Yeah, yeah. See, it's people holding on to stupid. Oh, well, half of it comes down to the fact that again we're a border city so funding has to come from two different both, places for both certain states, things yeah. and yeah I'm telling you it probably this conversation I wonder is how weird do the people who are like I wonder how many people know the concept of the Twin City naturally. We feel like it should be common knowledge because we live in one. It's how, stupid. How many people know what a Twin City is or have ever visited one? There's many of them. Oh, yeah, there's plenty of them. Yes, this is a stupid thing. Like, people think it's, it's oh, this is kind of unique and cool. I mean, well, kind of. I mean, to be honest. On surface it, level, yeah, but for the, people in, who live here, absolutely not. In the reality of things, yeah, I mean, Twin Cities are, there's plenty of them, but they are far more rare in comparison. Yeah, I but, mean, they're essentially 1% Twin Cities to the 98%, 99%. There was, there's always been normal. a normal. Do you know why, like, the rumor is, is that, um, that, what is that area called that yeah, used, they used to be shows at it all the time? Um, the downtown. It's if you take a left. Uh, if you're going south downtown and you come across the right, like a by state, you take a left. It's right there on the right where there used to be shows. Pocket Park. Oh yeah. Um, we played Pocket Park. Yeah. Um, 
there's always been a rumor that that whole entire strip mall that Parker Park is in, other than the apartments that are neighboring both sides of Parker Park, cannot be renovated due to the people. Yep. Uh-huh. Dad, dad owned one of them. Can't do none. Yep. They yeah. can. They can. And one of the main reasons. Well, it's not. It's, it's the whole downtown. You to to give you at least to teach you a little bit because we've been learning about it too. Well, that's it's what that I was saying with the political stuff. There's you can't. You can't change the facade. Yeah. That's it. That's it's it. Ridiculous. But there's you a, can and do there's a lot you, of extra codes. You can. Yeah. Because yeah. you're having you, to bring old so, buildings up to code. So people with barely any money <laughs> are trying to get business grants can't do nothing down there because a lot of people. A, it's a lot of extra money for the adding to the risk of what you'd already already do as a business, and B, a lot of a lot of people can't get financing because often no, you're not going to be able to do nothing down there. One thing that's helping is that it's getting a little bit better. You, um, assume that you know, I don't know about you, Johnny B's, which is a restaurant that moved yeah. downtown. Uh, they actually went through the channels to try they weren't going to open a branch here even though they had a ton of customers saying that they were we had one before decided no we didn't have johnny beast we did no we didn't we did i promise you we, it was it used to be uh um, it's over there it used to be arkansas boulevard. Arkansas boulevard yep i've eaten there before with, with ed mom no, it's that, been a long time but we that, used that was one. little bees that was a little bees. that was not little bees yeah, that little, was little yeah. bees little bees used to be in the mall no little no. bees was right there but this is not worth arguing at this particular point do I what pro- you wanted to look it up I, is it like a pompadour dude is the mascot no no there's no, not no, a mascot it, it, it was little it's bees. a diner this i is promise just, you it was little bees little it was bees. tex-mex yes Anyway, wait. To little go, bees is Tex Mex. Oh yeah. Okay, then yeah, probably was okay. little bees. So listen, my point is, uh, when you're when you go to downtown, they went through downtown and actually managed to get lucky enough to get a grant to go into a building to renovate it, got tax breaks for it, and all sorts of stuff. Um, but that's not well, the that's not the common. That's more well, the exception, and it needs to get better. And it like <laughs> and like I feel I like that has to be a problem in a lot of places. Like because then it's the people with money are the only ones who could do anything down there, or if they know the right people. There's been a lot of that, that and that happens be. in smaller towns. Yeah. Is the you know if you the good old boy syndrome you know? Oh, it was um, what was that called? I just, I, oh, were you was, wrong? Yeah, it was. But I'm trying wrong? to think of what was. I'm trying to think of the name of the restaurant that was in I'm the mall. That for I was our apology. Of. I don't know what the fuck you're thinking of. That was in the mall. The the restaurant that used to be in the mall. Oh, El Chico? The, there's 18 no. different restaurants no, no, that used to be in the mall. There, there used to be the cafeteria. Could you please like, Lubies? Lubies? Lubies was my shit. As Lubies, little bees. See. No, okay, fair enough. No. But listen. Oh, they, they have similar. Luby's gave you fucking jello. Whoo. Hot damn. Hey, yeah. no, Poncho's jello. Jerry Asher. Poncho's is fucking trash. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry, listen, we're, we're, Jerry Asher Kyle over here. We are having way too. Yeah, no, that's Jerry Asher for like Luby's. We are, up we are going way too much in a Texas can. Let's By change something. Poncho's was not ass. Poncho's, churros, Poncho's was awesome. They closed dude. down for Their a reason. Churros was they fucking have. amazing. And Their guess tacos. what? To the my same hell that Poncho's. The same hell that Poncho's went to is the same one that Taco Tico should have stayed in. If you can't go to a Mexican restaurant where a Mexican hands you a taco without gloves on, what are you doing? Handmade. That wasn't if there's like not that four cockroaches that come yes, across your table. No. Yes, it was. It was a cat. Oh okay, guys, shut the fuck up and change the subject because I'm done with all this. We're being too oh, Texas. Are you the boss now? I, I am the host. <laughs> Midsummer sucked. <laughs> oh yeah, we needed to do this for Blake. Midsummer. I'm sorry, Blake. Okay, I don't know if you ever please, watched this. Let's not spoil the movie, but you can I'm say not. a little bit about it. Okay. Which movie? I'm not going to spoil the I'm, and we're gonna, You know what we're going to do with this? <laughs> You're going to talk about Midsummer, then we're going to move into what our favorite horror movies are that gotcha. we can remember. For spooky. Um, Midsummer sucked. The soundstage was terrible. The story was trying too hard. It was. It seemed pretentious in the way that the movie is. Do you is. want to teach any listeners who maybe don't know what soundstage is? What, what that Soundstage means? is in which the audio levels of certain things are louder or quieter than others. And one big example like this of... this fucking show. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> one big example is is that when you're watching a movie on, on your TV and you have to turn it all the way up to hear voices, but then an explosion happens and you, and you go deaf because how loud it fucking is. Um, I think certain movies, just to give a little bit of fairness to that, certain movies do <laughs> that... The other places do. <laughs> God damn it, Blaze. I fixed it. There you no, go. you didn't. <laughs> Blaze, we're having technical difficulties with our lights over here. Um, but yeah, soundstage <laughs> yeah, is, when, is when levels are adjusted I'll very I'll go to the dollar store oddly. and get you. <laughs> and I think, I think what it is, I think that it's accounting for surround sound. And it for users who don't <laughs> use surround sound is when is typically the ones who have this problem. God <laughs> damn it, Blaze. Don't, 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 don't. The half of went out. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. See, this is why you guys should be watching on YouTube. This is why we say it's this, watch, this it, is, watch this, it on the side this, of This podcast plants. is just as much a hot mess as the fucking last one. Let's but just get <laughs> the visuals in it were great. I really, really like and the, and then the 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 um director of photography did a really, really good job in that movie. There was really, really cool visual scenes in that movie. However, I felt like it was way too try hardy. I felt like he was it was almost prestigious in a sense. 
Um, <laughs> Prestigious? Yeah. Pretentious? You pretentious, mean? yeah. Pretentious. <laughs> Prestigious uh, is a compliment. So. <laughs> Those are the two most drastically fucking but, different things. Yeah. To me, like, Hereditary actually was unsettling. Nothing in this movie to me was unsettling except right towards the end. Keep pulling that shit. And, um... Yeah, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would for as You're much as I loved Hereditary. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I, I loved Hereditary. But yeah, the, I did not like the story was dumb to me. The I have no plans of watching it. Just, I mean, I would honestly watch it. I'd give it a nah. watch, but I just was not a fan of it. Me and Andy went and we both loved Hereditary. We got off and I was like, the, the credits rolled. I was like, that movie sucked. And he was like, yeah, wasn't as good as I thought it would be. <laughs> See, but I, was like, I guess for me, when I use the word sucks, that means that I would not recommend you watch it. I'm just saying, unless it's one of those like the room situations where it's like it sucked, but you have to watch it because it's so bad that it becomes something different. I want to have an idea. Uh, I want I want us to watch terrible movies and commentate over them. No, no video for us, but just audio, kind of like science movie theater. I was about to say that's been yeah. done for thirty years. Oh, it's been done for a lot longer, I think, than that, right? I don't fucking know. But yeah, I want I want to do that for a couple of those movies. But anyways, uh, I would recommend anybody try watching it because the visuals alone are really, really are done really, really well. Uh, you know what's weird? Principal photography is done really well in that movie. To go through your thing real quick. This is just a very short aside, but I'm sure that somebody at least did it. Did you ever, maybe we've talked about it on here. I don't know. Did you ever just used to watch music videos and you'd change, like your either TV would be too far down where you couldn't hear it or it'd be muted and somehow it changed over and you'd be like, oh, here's MTV. And you'd see somebody singing, you're like, try to guess what the song's about with like a little bit of time like see if you can figure out from the video and the lip syncing and stuff to figure out what they're saying in the song no and click it on and see how right you were Mm-mm. Not, oh, man. never done that in my life yeah when it, i had to ride the bus as a kid to school because we lived out in the middle of nowhere and my parents of course could not afford the gas to go the mm. like 10 miles one direction to get me to school there is n- but anyway did you, did you have a bike my ferry road yeah that ain't 10 miles out is it yes it is actually really mm-hmm. it does not feel it's that 11 miles out, out. Wow. Uh, but anyway, um, anyway, so when we used to do that, we had to wake up early and be ready. So we'd sit there in the morning and watch it. Sometimes it'd be like Adam's family or something. Sometimes we'd end up rolling through and, and VH1 or MTV would have music going. Or even see, uh, what is it, country music television? C-M-T. CMT, yeah. Yeah, so we'd do that. And we just and country was our funnest one because we don't, we don't, none of us really care for country. So it was like, w- that would be the game of having it gone and seeing what you could say over it. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, well, what are we talking about? But anyway, through your thing, What's so funny? No, like don't, don't just keep talk, just keep going. Don't even, don't entertain them. <sighs> Saul's crazy. I'm just right. laughing at those lights. <laughs> they look so sad, wadded up at the end of table. I was like, they can't see that, can they? They can't. It's just so. Yeah, I know. Well, Look, somebody went to the dollar store and got their life. I can't <laughs> somebody went to Walmart and spent Patreon money. Our patrons paid for these, and you just fucked it up. I wish uh, our patrons need to pay for better mic, <laughs> mic stands. <laughs> Oh, put that burden on the patrons. Just because you treat you provide, shit like a goddamn animal. Provide better content. It just fell off. <laughs> sure it did. I'm pretty sure the You're fucking over here yanking on it. And I can't imagine the way you treat your dick. I mean, God Derailing damn. the conversation. But listen. Horror movies. We're, we're, what's your favorite horror movie? Since apparently Midsommar sucked and Blake. I, Shining. Do with that with what you will. Shining. That's one of those weird movies. Blake, have you seen the Shining? Mm-mm. Oh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything about it because I won't movie, say anything. I mean, I know I've seen it, but I've never just sat down and been like. That's how I was until like this year, dude. I've well, seen, I mean, so I've much seen it on. I've seen you know Jess has had it on. I've, Jess just flows through so many horror movies. I'm just. It's like, a okay. solid movie. I mean, it's really it's a good movie. It, it's a really good movie, but it's it's also older. So there's some things that are of its age. Sometimes that's for the better, and sometimes that's for the worse. Well, I I'd hope say. Doctor Sleep is good. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be as good. Nowhere near as good. We'll see, but. Um, that's one of those things of do you, that always comes down to I feel like horror is such a weird genre to define because subjective, it, yeah, it really, it's what it seems like. It's like yeah. some people are like, oh, you consider that a horror movie, and I'm like, well, shit, like I don't know that I consider The Shining a horror movie, but at the same time, I think that there's enough scenes that go those those feel decidedly horror inspired. So I think that the movie at least somehow digs into horror with like iconic scenes like the girls in the hallway and stuff on the, I mean, what's that horror movie of like the, the family's van breaking down in the middle of the desert. I think it's Nevada. I do not know. That and it's like they get hunted by mutants. The Hills have eyes. Yes. I actually found that movie to be very creepy when I was younger. And now going back and watching it, I was like, that movie is just like weird. Well, if we're gonna do that, and we're Remember gonna say Jeepers that movies Creepers change. coming out whenever dude, you're young, yeah, and dude. trying to watch it now, it's like, 
Yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> but when that you're movie a, terrifying. But the, when, yeah, when you're young, you're like, what the hell? I'll tell you, yeah. the scariest movie I've ever seen in my entire life in terms of contextually the way I felt. It wasn't technically a horror movie, but Eight-Legged Freaks. Oh. God. My, good, okay. my boy, um, um, Day, David, the main character, the actor of that movie. He's in Scream. Can't think of his name. There's so many people in Scream, so I don't know. Anyway, his sister my- came out as trans like not too long ago. It's, it's David something. Is, is David Arquette in that movie? David Arquette, yeah. There we go. I my contextually remember. scary movie that wasn't meant to be scary, but just because of life situation was Signs. Oh, See, dude, because I lived out in the middle of butt that, fuck that, nowhere. Yeah. Me too. Well, so, <laughs> and yours is even worse though, because you've got those fucking creaky. Well, actually, well, remember, what house did you live it was in the at bi- this time? You never got to see the big house before it burned No, out. but it was on it, the land, right? Yeah, you, know, you know where the big house is up there, where they rebuilt it. Yes. It was right there. But imagine all that being pine trees, just fucking like you yeah. can't, pine and oak trees. You can't see nothing. I have a really funny quick story you about signs. You cannot see nothing, you so can, you can you see something, huh? You, yeah. You can see something. You can see the fucking trees. Yeah. I have a, I have a really... So that goes into the thing, though. It's signs a horror movie. I, Absolutely. It's a thriller at the very minimum. But yeah. when you're a kid living in the middle of nowhere, and aliens are already... I was kind of obsessed with aliens at a young age. Oh, I was so, too. So I was kind of like... Weren't we all, though? I mean, I, I feel like aliens... I, I don't know. I, I feel like every generation's been... Obsessed with aliens. Obsessed with aliens yeah. ever since at least the, the moon 60s, landing stuff. You had the 70s. You had the 80s, which Aliens, the movie, an a, or Alien, the movie, came out in the 80s. And what a fucking movie, The too. 90, which... God. That's you know what? That's movie. one of my favorite horror movies. That's a solid goddamn movie. Um, Actually, I, I do... The Shining is one of mine, but if it's not The Shining, the title is very cheesy, but it's called Hell House LLC. And it's essentially it's, it's not that bad. The synopsis of that is it's there's a haunted house they open up every year for Halloween or whatever, and then uh, th- things in the house actually start becoming real in the house. And it actually it sounds cheesy. The name's cheesy. That movie, me and Annie, we both went to bed that night. And we we're like, uh, we're gonna sleep with our comfy lights on because like that movie comfy is lights. unsettling uh, with how creepy it was. And I mean, see, and that's that becomes thing is unsettling. The, is, is, yeah. is something that makes you unsettling to know what it is? Because I think that there's parts of the new Joker movie that are unsettling and definitely uncomfortable. So it's like, but that's well, what I'm saying. You uh, have to pull this line between what do you consider it's intention to be intention versus. I think intention versus non intention, right? Like, I think that, like, in a majority in time, like, the, the so Joker. Like, are you saying, like, be, is the movie intended to be a horror movie? No, no. Well, I'm talking about uh, the feeling of uncomfortableness, uneasiness, disturbance. It like, definitely pervades that movie 100% Joker? through. Yes. Yeah. Is it, but I guess. But it's more of a it's character not study. It's scary. Yeah. It's, not, it's not really meant well, to it, be. A, a, you can do. You have a general sense of dread throughout it, while you're also kind of learning these things. I it's it's a bit of a roller coaster, but the overarching thing. Oh, is, no, is it? There's, does, a, there's a ton of un, there's a ton of uncomfortable scenes. Is it a roller coaster? Does Does Martin Scorsese count it as cinema? Yes, actually, uh, he sure was he does. involved with it. So yeah. I'm sure he was. Yeah, or it, it wasn't him because he couldn't because of his work on the Irishman. That's the Netflix movie he's doing coming up. Uh, but he sent uh, one, of sure his, one of his one of his. Uh, co-partner people that he typically does stuff with. She went off and produced it with Tom. After Taxi Driver, dude, I'm telling you, like, I've I've heard it so much now that like that is a that is a very close movie to Taxi Driver. Yeah, um, in a good way. And, and Taxi Driver way. is a good movie. So, um, but anyway, but, that's my point. Is does that make it that that's that's why I say you say it's subjective, but at the same time, I don't know that anybody would rightfully, if you've seen Joker, uh, then let us know in the comments below. Well, it's you like, think, but is that horror or not? Well, it's like comedy. Comedy goes anywhere from just like that, like early office of the film where you feel literally shameful for him mm. is the same thing as that feeling you're talking about with those. And there's so many different brands. There's you know there's comedy of just stupid humor, just shit thrown out to see what sticks. But that's you know that's still funny. But then there's complicated humor. You know, so it's it's see, any genre can be really like that. Yeah, because it's like black. Black comedy, black humor, but like people say, and that, that sounds weird to say. It's like you're dark, humor yeah. Or? But yeah, but they call it black or, comedies or and dark, about, dark. It's dark humor, and they call them. If I'm not mistaken, that's the terminology they use. It is dark humor, uh, dark, dark, black comedy. comedy or whatever like that. I don't think it's called black no, comedy. That's, if it's that's not, then he is family. <laughs> 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 I was trying to think of a movie. I was like Big Mama's House. <laughs> Is that the one with Martin Lawrence? Dude, that's a classic. <laughs> that is a fucking classic. Not the sequels, though. Ooh, okay, anyway. Yeah, there's four sequels. Maybe it's not called Black Comedy, but I really thought it was. Um, 
And uh, tell you what, because uh, they consider Gremlins two to be part of that as well. It's like it's well, very morbid. Well, There's a well, lot like of Gremlins crazy stuff. Gremlins one's in it. considered a, it was popping up as horror movie on Netflix. I'm like, just like it's, not a it's horror more movie. funny than anything. Yeah, I was like, yeah. she's like, is but that? two is kind of weird. Uh, anyway, where I was going with that? Oh, there's, 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 uh, it's a trilogy. Big Mamas. Oh, God, <laughs> Lord. Keep going, but. Anyway, <laughs> where I was trying to go with that, um, God, that completely made me lose my train of thought. Let me rewind a little bit here. What were we talking Dark about? Dark humor. Dark humor. Okay, uh, the, the ambiguity of, of what you find funny and what is and isn't funny. I feel like uh, one of my favorite movies, for a number of reasons, I, I fucking love that movie, is World's Greatest Dad, and I know you've seen it. Uh, I've never heard of it's that movie. A, it's Robin Williams, and it's got the kid who played oh, wait, Junie seen that movie. as is, his son. Is, isn't that the movie he kills himself by an accident? Mm, yeah. Oh, his son does, yes. That's, what I'm that's, about, that's yeah. enough of a setup, and is I don't it, feel like that's anything. His son accidentally kills himself, and his son's kind of a dick anyway. But that movie is so interesting because I feel like to different people, depending on what they find funny and what their level of comedy is, I don't think that some people would even consider that a comedy. I feel like there's plenty of people that would just consider that like it's just a, a movie. Drama. And is, maybe even a drama, because there are points of it that are, but the movie's intention, at least from the director, and I think if you're the right person watching it, you pick up on that intent, is to be funny with a sense of morbidity to it yeah. and and also moral ambiguity from like a should he be doing this it's, a, it's an interesting movie and if you haven't watched it it's a fantastic movie and it has a baller ass soundtrack there's so a jack black movie and my like favorite that. my favorite comedy is basketball which is just yeah. pure stupid so <laughs> well basketball is a mix of all clever. comedy right? it's pretty it's clever yeah slapstick in a couple of areas i mean it's uh crude humor in a couple of areas it's uh, really there's crude. prop humor in some areas i mean prop humor. Well, I mean, what would you call the part where he my, where he takes his towel my, off and his dick rolls to the ground and goes <laughs> and then rolls and he's like <laughs> that that's my, I call that prop humor essentially. And my favorite joke from that is when they get in an argument and he goes, I mean he's like, Let me walk with you for a minute, pig fucker. You mind if I call, call you pig, pig fucker? fucker? <laughs> no, only my friends can call me pig fucker. Because he was a teacher <laughs> like, in that like, movie, wasn't he? <laughs> no, they what? Oh yeah, was it Robin, um, Robin Williams. Williams. Yes, he was. Oh yes, in okay. World's Greatest Dad. That's a, that is a good yes. movie. There's, Fantastic. What's movie. the movie like that with Jack Black, where it's like a very uh, morbidly humorous movie? He's playing like a funeral person, I think. Oh, I haven't seen it, but I do know what you're talking about. Is it Donnie? Ah, uh, yes. I is think it? that's it. Uh, that's a good movie too, but I haven't seen that movie in years. See, but that goes down to the conversation again. Is how much of it should be based entirely off of intent of the director versus the subjective I opinion that, of the viewer? I think that the genre is defined by the intent in the of the the screenwriter slash the story creator and the director, and then then it's up for anybody's guess at that. After that, it's it, it's if it makes you uncomfortable and scared, it's a horror movie for you. Well, that's you. when you get the slashes into a ride drama slash comedy action comedy see, action like, drama. See, yeah, exactly. That's how that's when how, we deal with how games th- and music, and they start being like, "Well, it's it's metalcore pop punk." What? <laughs> That's what yeah, it is. Metalcore. That that whole or a game is like a third person, but it's also an action game. So it's third person slash action or third person action. They start melding these things together. But I guess where I was going with that is, I think more than anything, yeah, I think you're. I think it has to be a category, right? Um, is it what is the movie on paper, regardless of if you watch it or not? You can see that movie, and the intent of the director says this is a horror movie, or this is a slasher movie, or this is a, a thriller or a suspense movie. And you can look at it and go, okay, this is a romantic comedy. I don't have to watch the movie to know that this is the intention behind the movie was to make a romantic comedy. Uh, the only thing that gets weird about that is I hope that that is the director or whoever made it that's choosing that, and not some person who's just putting on a service going, I'd consider this a romantic comedy. Yeah, I feel like more often than not, though, it's, it's the people the behind cre- the movie. Yeah. But Bernie, by the way, is the name of the movie. Bernie. Yeah. Okay. There we go. But the other side of that has to at least somewhat be that categorically speaking, without ever watching it, it will always be that at least because it, it's that whether you watch it or not. But the moment that you watch it and interact with it, it becomes it's that subject for you to too. what you are. And it's it's subject to be like, well, I consider this shit to be incredibly funny. And I know this is going to sound fucking crazy because, you know, but it's like people who look at some of the shit that happened in 9-11 and laugh at it because they're like, well, if you don't think about the context that a lot of people died and you just look at this like it's just something that was caught on film, maybe something in that can be funny for Ooh, a that's brief a hot period. Take. <laughs> it is yeah. a hot take. That's a hot take. It is a hot I'm take. Not touching Ooh, that one. Yeah, but my nope. point being is that humor, like you say, humor is different to everybody, just like scariness well, is George different Carlin to George Carlin was the first one to tackle that just joke, like, wasn't he? Because oh, it was like, was he alive? Because it Actually, was like the next day or something. I don't, I don't think so. I want to pull that back because if you, if you remember, while we're going on to the topic of Carlin, um, I thought he was dead by two thousand one. Was no, he? no, no, dude, he was in Cars. Yeah, he was. Yes, yeah. he was the hippie bus in Cars. 
What let me the but world? let me pull back a little bit more. He was also in Scare Movie. I think three. It, I want to say like uh, the, they're the all Oracle. terrible movies. So I want to say about oh eight oh nine he died. Yeah, that sounds right. Because uh, one of his last stand ups was like oh eight or oh yeah. seven. Uh, but anyway, the, if I'm remembering right, on two thousand one, I think he recorded it on September 9th and September tenth of two thousand one, and it was called "I Kind of Like It When a Lot of People Die." That was supposed to be the name of the of the uh, stand up, and it was supposed to be the, the the jokes were all supposed to be like that. And he ended up going back since the day after he finished recording it. Nine eleven happened. I want to say, and I'm fairly positive this is true. And this is interesting because Blake pointed me towards a video that reminded me of this. I already knew it was true. But I think he completely went back, changed some of his jokes, changed the name, completely changed everything he was planning on doing because of that, out of kind of like a respect thing. Oh, I thought you were going to say he went in and added jokes about 9-11. No. no. Oh, no he died. okay. Now, there are plenty of people June that of 2008. Have- Okay, there you Man, go. that felt like it was longer. Than, but there, than that. there are plenty of people who have brushed on the nine eleven topic, and there's it, it's the it's the long running thing of comedy of how can you make certain things that are really morbid funny in a way. And I guess this is a better example of what I'm saying is that there are people that can look at something as horrific as nine eleven when you view it just from a plain factual like you look at the stuff and go, oh god. Countless people lost their lives. Buildings came down. There's people that dealt with problems from that building destruction, all that. And that's, again, I mean, if you even... We're still dealing with those problems and if you, Yeah, and if you believe it even happened, there's so many layers to that shit. You know what I mean? What? Again, so many layers to oh, that I, shit. Oh, you mean... Yeah. Uh, Just, mm. But my point mm. is, when you go through that, it, it's too much of a distraction. Uh, I don't know where I stand on that fence. I'm going to err on the side of it probably happened, but... I don't fucking know enough because I don't live there and it doesn't it's like aliens. genuinely affect me. But you're describing it like some people describe aliens. I'm pretty sure they're out there, but I have evidence. That's true. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it, it uh, was inside. The, only evidence, the evidence. only evidence I have is what's been presented to me by people who decided that it was worthy of what they consider to be evidence that should be out there. That's what I'll say. Uh, but going through that, there are people that can take something as horrific as uh, as 9-11 and then find a way to make it funny, like the classic Louis C.K. joke of... Um, I like to. You how know, long did it take you to jerk off? I should say I, I view I view how bad of a person somebody is based off of how long it took them uh, after nine eleven to, to to masturbate, and then he says, "My mom's between the two towers." Yeah, <laughs> and the joke is fucking killer. It's funny. It's not really insensitive to anything. It's and it's more. It's also it, it, it does the classic comedy thing to me where it's it's so absurd that you know it's not true. See, but it's me, still funny to imagine it. And he talks about jerking off so much, and everyone was surprised. Like, I was like, <laughs> that was my was thing. Like, he was like, and then you he jerk off at the hotel, then you eat ice cream, and then. <laughs> See, for me, it's the shock value that is the humor in that. It's not the it's the joke adds to the humor or the yeah, creates it, the humor, it's, but it's well, the shock it's value. It's all together, right? That's it's like nervous laughter when you hear stuff like that. Oh no, I I, no, I heartedly laughed when I heard that. Heartedly. Was, well, no, I'm saying With my well, whole gut. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying it's funny, but I'm saying like it's funny because of the shock value, and well, it's it's, it's funny, similar. It's to funny like, across the board. The it's joke funny itself for the is funny. Of- it's funny that I mean he's partially playing a joke on himself, saying he masturbates too much, and he and the way he frames that he's a, joke, a horrible person. The frame the way he frames a joke is that he knows he's a horrible person because he couldn't keep himself from masturbating. Because it's kind of like the setup, of like he's so pitiful that he has to masturbate yeah there's a lot of things that go into the joke and the way that you as an individual may hear it that leads it to being like i genuinely thought it was funny i mean because yeah, even though I, it's I about it. something crazy i get what you're saying yeah it's like anthony jesselnick saying he'll drop a baby who he, anthony jesselnick I don't know who that is. Oh, very, very controversial. Well, I'm not gonna say controversial. Uh, I should oh, is say, that the guy that took the knee or whatever? Ka- <laughs> God, <laughs> Jesselnick Ka- Kaepernick. Uh, anyway, no, this dude has a uh, he's got a new stand up special. It's called Fire in the Maternity Ward, um, which is already funny enough. Yeah. Uh, and one of his jokes on there is that uh, uh, he 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 loves holding babies. I love it when people ask me to hold their baby, so when they look away, I can drop it. And it's all of his jokes are meant to be the craziest thing that you can think about in any given situation. And it goes into that same thing of where you look at what he says. And even though he's joking about something horrific, it's so absurd that, you know, it's not true. So instead what you're doing is thinking of the shock value plus the Mm -hmm. meticulous setup behind the joke, maybe the wording that was used to give it the most impact to kind of surprise you and catch you off guard, all those things. I mean, it's that's, that's what's interesting about comedy, but it's also what makes comedy so crazily different where someone can hear that joke and go I don't find that funny at all because they don't appreciate they get offended and I don't mean that a bad thing whatever it is about comedy that they like they don't appreciate about the way he did that joke oh and that's I, fine I get that too yeah but it's it yeah so comedy and horror weirdly enough are, are two genres that I feel like really rely on each other almost because they 
both, and it's, I think it's part of why scary movie works a little bit, uh, is that it's a parody. Uh, it, not even the fact that it's a parody. I think comedy and and horror both rely on a sense of uh, cheesiness. I'm not gonna say cheesiness as much as I'll say like a, a sense of um, of immediacy and caught off guardness that like shock value. It's part of its shock value. It is shock value. Shock value is a weird word. Would you consider a jump scare to be shock value? Yeah. I guess I, when I think shock, you're probably right. I guess I, I, you hear the word shock value used so much in relation to someone's. I mean, to speaking. me, it, it's something that it, that immediately shocks you. Whether it's it's humor, fear. Well, either way, yeah. The the feeling of like something oh, that juts you into that emotion quickly. Yes, quickly. Yeah. and you, you didn't expect. And I feel like comedy leans on that super heavily, and so does horror. Yeah, and comedy like that's that's some of my favorite comics in the world. They'll tell a quick joke. And they'll, they'll do like a real long out story as a joke and it'll be funny, but then they'll tell a very quick one liner like Bo Burnham does and it's hilarious, but it's very quick. Yeah. Quick wit. So that's an interesting thing is I feel like comedy horror. Uh, there's a new movie that I haven't seen that Blake is watching. I keep bringing up Blake, but he's my movie friend. Oh yeah. He's a Blake guy has who, a lot of, who a lot has of me catch up with advice. all of them. Uh, and I think if I if I remember right, he said it didn't come with a, with a code for digital. So I won't get to watch it unless I buy it myself. Uh, but a new movie Rent that just came YouTube. out called uh, satanic panic. Uh, and like it, it's, it's it's entirely that it's it's meant to be legitimately horror filled in some spots, but also funny in other parts. Uh, um, what is the movie's called? Rob Zombie's. Uh, there's a new one that just came out. Uh, oh, uh, Three from Hell. It's yeah, the one that, that just came out. The series. Um, I don't know what you'd call the overarching series. I just, well, just the first one, House of a Thousand Corpses, was the first of that trilogy, and then it was uh, the Devil's Rejects. That's that's what it, that's what the series is called. I'm pretty sure the Reject series. I probably or the region. Uh, yeah, I I've never thought I've, about I've it. Heard of that? Uh, but yeah, like that's what those are. Those movies have tons of humor, but also gore and some. That's all, some yeah, horror. Very true. Those but movies, I, oh, I guess I really. Like I don't know that movies. I'd consider humor to be one of their main facets, but it definitely no. Uses, but it is in there. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I think Satanic Panic is a movie um, that is actually aimed primarily at trying to straddle that line on purpose. There was like a ground dog, uh, ground dog, groundhog uh, horror movie that was just came, Happy Death Day. Like where she's like on her birthday, she dies and she relives that day every day. Yeah, I've watched it. Uh, Is it good? It's okay. It's not terrible. Uh, and there's here's the problem though. There's a sequel where it happens again to somebody else or the same person. Same and girl. Jess was pissed because it's like you just spoiled the whole fucking last movie, and she actually wanted to watch it because like they came out pretty quick. Oh, uh, they came out like a, a year. Yeah, and then a, the, year the trailer and a half for the second one was like showed literally the ending oh, of this yes. first movie, and then was like, I'm glad you said that because I'm not gonna watch that trailer. The movie's not bad, but uh, and it's it's a similar thing. It's got some comedy. It's actually pretty funny, but there also is real moments of like horror. Of like, oh, okay. see, one of my favorite TV shows, or like I say that because the show is wildly different every season. It was American Horror Story, and I say that because every different every story every season is a different story completely. They reuse a lot of the same actors, but they're all completely different characters and completely different stories. Season one was a really, really, really well done horror story. They live in a house that is, for the lack of better terms, haunted. If you die in the house, you do not go to hell or heaven. You stay as a ghost in that house. And you cannot leave the property except on Halloween. You can leave the property on Halloween. Uh, I'll ghost walk. But, um, which was a really good. It ended really well. The second season was okay. The third season was terrible. Like I, Every season after that, like I just did not enjoy. Until, uh, I think it's like season six or whatever it's called. American Horror, American Horror Story Apocalypse. Which is a, almost a direct tie-in sequel to the first season, where a child conceived by one of the ghosts and a human in the first season was the Antichrist, and this is the story of the Antichrist. How's that ghost dick hitting that? Uh, As, uh, it's Evan Peters' ghost dick of all people. It, I must say, it has to be a ghost dick for the person to be born, because that means that the the woman would have to be a human and alive, not a ghost. Uh, yeah, it was, otherwise it couldn't be born. Think of it, but as, it still leads the question of how that ghost dick. Think get of up it in as like pussy. Palpatine, Palp which is now canon. I don't know if you know that or not. What is? Canon, um, Palpatine is the person who made uh, Anakin Mons pregnant with the Force. That's canon due to a, a comic book. Oh, he, cool. There was no father uh, ever. Well, I mean, yeah, they, they always said it was. Yeah, they never knew. It well, was the Jesus story. Yeah, but, but yeah. It, was, it was in fact Palpatine. There's, there's, some of the comic books are real cool. Interesting. Okay, well, go ahead. But no, I was just saying like that was done really, really well. And that's kind of just the big disconnect for me too is that sometimes they – for the lack of better term or for the lack of a better phrasing, I guess, is that sometimes movies and shows, they just, they get too cliche -y and they try to get, they try to appeal to like what's current. And then it takes rewatchability out of them completely. 
Blaze, if and you watched ages. any of the American Horror Story, I could I could see Jess liking it. That's why oh, yeah, I wonder. she's watched like all of them, but the most recent one. Okay, so both of you probably know the answer to this question better than I do. Uh huh. Um, you mentioned the first one, and it sounds like the idea behind the first one was very small and contained, uh, kind of like another series that I feel like follows the same trajectory of what I think American Horror Story did was uh, Paranormal Activity, where the first movie is very, it's its a very few number of people that it's affecting. It's set in one place, and it's not really that complicated of a story, but it's interesting. Well, American Horror Story goes off the rails in like season two. It takes place in like the 60s and in the same asylum. Well, I know that, that it changes, which also the same thing happens in Paranormal Activity. It time jumps and all oh, sorts does of it? stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I've only watched two of them, but I yeah, know that too, it got really crazy. I don't remember what, the, um, what it was. It, it became the it became Saw. Very similar to Saw. First Saw is very small, uh, well, and then every movie has to up the ante. In terms of scope. But yeah. that goes into what I'm talking about. Is did the, Do you think that the reason that you stopped enjoying it until whatever that one was, was because in an effort to outdo themselves from the small thing, you almost inevitably have to do something a bigger scale. And then when you do that to top, to, to try and expand from that, it's like the idea that you can never scale it back down. I would argue that some people would say, or that there's a feeling with workers who do stuff. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but there's a feeling with people who do that kind of work that once you start to scale up, it feels like you should not be able to scale back down, whether that's because of personal feeling of your mind starts working in a way of got to think bigger. So then, and you kind of lose the ability to think on a smaller scale within that world or franchise or whatever. Well, even as contained as the first season was, what the first season did that the second season really didn't do a whole lot that I remember at least it's been a real long time since I watched the second season. Um, is it goes through uh, over the course of like the 11 or 12 episodes, whatever it is, it goes through the story. All the ghosts are still in the house and they can make themselves seen, but they all have okay. purposes in okay. the house. So season two is a follow up to one. No, no, no I'm talking about season one. Okay. Um, gotcha, and gotcha. the thing about that is, is that when uh, season one was going on and being recorded and everything, and the whole story about season one focuses on probably about 20 different characters because it not only shows them in the house, because you, because you'll be watching some random person will be in the house and you're like, who is that? And you realize it's a ghost. The next, like, first half of the ep- next episode would be dedicated to where they were in the house and the time area they were in. The second season wasn't like that at all. It was just, they were in a state asylum. It did go into backstories, but not like that. It felt scaled down compared to the first season, uh, season, which is weird. And I think that a lot of that is why I did not like it, because the first, the second season opened up with, like, aliens? And then, like, I want to say this was around the 60s to 70s when that, that phenomenon was big, but then it took place, then it started, then it transitioned into the same asylum. Well- yeah, I thought the second one was still all right. I mean, well, that's like, well, it was it was different. It was completely different it was. format, but it was still a good story. It was, and then the whole fact that they've kind of each season, from what I've seen, they've kind of made notice to the fact of hey, these these are the same, you know, like what's going on here to where these people are kind of caught. Yeah, and and and, the, and it's it. It is a good story, but I'm just saying it's not as good as the first one. I did not like any the first two seasons. Season two is actually watchable for me. Nothing beyond that, except the 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 whatever five, six, seven. There was apocalypse parts of was. some seasons where I'm like, oh, okay, that could be cool, and I just it, you know, but that kind of stuff doesn't interest me anyway. Well, do and maybe y'all don't know since y'all aren't necessarily diehard fans, or maybe y'all were. Do they change writers and directors and stuff ever every I have season? No idea. To my knowledge, because that would make more sense. Right. If you want every season to be drastically different from the rest, then so, wouldn't it be great to put? Or I, I think that to an extent, a lot of people would logically fall on put different minds behind it because you're going to get a, a, a drastically different product if you put somebody who's not thinking about the confines of what they put themselves in for the first season. You know what I mean? Well, to my knowledge, it's been it's always been Ryan Murphy who was. Um, American Crime, American Horror Story. Yeah, he was behind uh, Nip Tuck. American oh, Horror Nip Story. Tuck was great until yeah. about four or five seasons in. He's he's the main screenwriter behind all this. Really show. lost the plot. <laughs> yeah. So like, and and you know, American Horror Story. It's I'm sure if I gave it time, like I would like some of the seasons. Like I hear the uh, Freak Show, which I think is season three, is like really good. But when I watched, it, I was like, uh, uh-uh, I don't like this. No, like, I like that one. I remember did. that one. I'm about to give it a second try, but like it's weird the way that that show evolved into from from what it was because the first season actually had unnerving moments in it, where the second season did too. Third season just started out. I, I'm not scared by clowns or carnival stuff like that. Well, it see, some of that comes down to uh, subjectivity. Yeah, well, well and they were going like, through different. You're gonna inevitably hit styles too. It was kind of. I think that's what 
Maybe that's the point. Because that's what they're doing right now. They're doing like 80s slasher, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, then so the I, I do think that you're probably onto something. Coven. It's not only about changing the time period. It's about changing the time period to what was expected. In the 80s, slasher movies were all the hit. Yeah. So it's like in the 60s, maybe the types of horror movies that were going on or 70s, depending on when that Insane Asylum one took place that you were saying, maybe that those are the, maybe they're trying to do it like, these are the types of movies that people would have expected to see back there. So it's kind of like a historic, a historical like time study of the way film was done back then while also trying to tell a new narrative that's it's a little meta i guess is what i'm trying to say is like what what time period was the was season one set in uh modern day of the time it was recorded so like what is that 2010 mm. 11, something like that 12? and that was around the time that paranormal activity was really big so maybe again maybe well, it was taking inspiration from what was going it, on in the in media at the time it doesn't always but but once again it since it goes through people who lived in the house like tate who is evan peters mm-hmm. he was he he has like this kind of shaggy hair and he's wearing like what looks to be like hipsterish clothes kind of actually i never paid attention to his wardrobe until annie pointed out but he's wearing 90s clothes it shows his backstory he was a school shooter like in the 90s like that's how he died he died in the house the swat team killed him and that's how he became a ghost in the house it's because he was shot up by a swat team that came to the house but like if 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 you look at him you can definitely see um like what i mean by the wardrobe is that like that and then of course you could definitely tell with some of the other ones there's like a victorian um, there was a guy who like operated on his baby. I can't remember his exact backstory. He was the creepy guy from Amer- uh, American Psycho. Um, have you ever seen that movie? Yeah, I know. Um, I don't, I don't the remember. guy that was hitting it's on been Patrick a long Bateman. Time. I don't remember. He was the guy that was hitting on Patrick Bateman. Well, hold on. I think of the right movie with American Psycho, the one with Christian Bale. Yeah. Yeah. Christian Bate. No, Christian. Is it Christian Bell? It is it's Christian Bell. Yeah, I got Bateman confused with Bell for some reason. But, um, but, um, I can't think of his name. All right, Robin, calm down there. Anyway, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, you seen you seen then that's what he looks like in the movie, which you could tell like that sweater and stuff like that came from pretty much in the nineties. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, I get where you're going. Well, I don't know. I guess my thing is I've never watched the show, but it never looked like it was my kind of thing. But I'm also not a huge horror buff. It's not that's, really. That's one of those things. Like you know, we were we we were intending to go with what's your favorite horror movie, but really, I guess it's kind of one of those things. Like I don't know. I mean, honestly, one of the movies that makes me feel the most uncomfortable, and I also think is also really a great movie, just because the way it chose to pull itself out there was the original Saw. I think it, how confined yeah. it was, the way that they went about doing stuff. It just it's kind of like it sold the idea of. This is not that crazy of an idea to where someone could legit do this, and I think some of the most scary things to me but obviously uh, plenty of people considering the success of Saul is the idea of anything can be more scary when you start feeling like there's a real chance it could happen to you. Absolutely. Like when Seth, I was, I, I don't know. So like, did Seth tell you about his incident? No, nah, I don't know. Okay. I'll tell, I'll tell you after the recording, but Seth told me about his incident and I was like, uh, that's terrifying to me. That's one of the first things I'm looking into. See, but it's it's why I think ghost stories scare certain people more than they do others. If you've never had an experience in your life that you feel like was driven by a ghost, then your your ability to connect with that, and it normally happens when you're younger. A lot of people get young ghost yeah. fear, and then it just kind of almost continues to happen throughout your life almost because you're manifesting it. It's like you, your, your brain is tapping into the fact that you once thought it was a ghost for whatever reason, so that's got to be the reason for these weird things happening. But I feel like that's why certain ghost movies really scare certain people, whereas like Paranormal Activity wasn't scary to me at all. Instead, it was interesting to watch because it was just an odd story. I was like, oh, okay. If that could actually happen in my mind because I don't believe in ghosts and I've never had anything that did for me it was like oh if that happened that would be kind of crazy but I didn't believe it whereas I think some people watched that movie and went that shit could have happened to me ghosts are real I've had experiences I've had something similar to that happen or I know somebody who's had something similar and they believe for that reason well for me like if I go to bed after watching a horror movie and I feel unease it's it's mainly it's like what if that just all of a sudden happened like obviously you could trick your mind and say like, or you could tell your mind like that ain't going to happen to me. That ain't real. But then in your mind also, if the movie does a good enough job of it, it almost convinces you like this could happen to technically anybody like demons could, we don't know for sure. Demons could very well be real. Fair. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, that like it kind of gives you an uneasiness of not expecting that to happen or not thinking it's to happen. But the fact that you're questioning it and the, and then the unknown about it, it's just like, well, that, that, that it's obviously a movie. And yeah. like they joke around afterwards and it's, it's like actors reading the script, but it's like, man, that could just the unknownness of that happening to somebody or you yourself is like, that's creepy to think about. I think blaze is similar to me in that you don't watch a lot of movies. I just, I've recently started watching yeah, more. I don't. Um, 
I just noticed that you've been a little more quiet in this. I'm wondering how much you actually. No, I was I was just thinking about uneasy well, moments in movies. Well, yeah, but even then, I was thinking I was trying to think of movies that I know that you've watched that would be on the horror spectrum, and I think I'm like, there's just not a lot of movies because. I guess, you know, me and you hang out so much and when we go watch movies, a lot of the stuff that we are most drawn to quickly. Saul, are you worried about your mic? Keep it going. Good lord. Well, there's the easy way to check it. Just look at that. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. Saul, you're going. I can see your wavelengths over there on Mixcraft. Okay. Just I calm down. Feel your I just accidentally yanked one of the XLR cables from under the table. Okay, well, yeah, don't do that anymore. Anyway, I'll try not um, to. Me and you go to movies all the time, but the things that we're most drawn to in the theaters tends to be animated movies because yeah. of our love for animation. Like half of why we even want to see animated movies is, I, I feel like at least I feel like that's fair enough to say is yeah. that both of us just want to see how crazy the animation looks and different techniques that people do differently and how impressive it looks. And then on top of that, whether you get a great movie out. Well, of see, it. I don't generally watch serious movies. If I watch something serious, it's a documentary. I like to be yeah, 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 you know, completely real. There's some shows I guess I watch that are kind of serious, you know. But well, yeah, we were talking about that. Like you most times, you, you've never show, watched like Breaking Bad or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, most there's very few I, that you've seen. So. Yeah, most shows I watch have some sort of element that breaks it up to where it's not completely serious. Well, see, I, me and you are similar in that regard. Of I think until recently, for sure, a lot of the movies I'd watch, I, I always lean towards comedies because there's something that I guess there's also a sense of like you don't have to, I when think you when you live a certain ADD life is what it was. Yeah, something that moves around in that regard a lot, and isn't that serious where you don't have to feel like if if you don't pay enough attention, you're not going to be lost. And it's like, oh well, it's just a it's a simple plot that's used as a device to get comedy out to me. Well, you know that's what why I mean? a lot of horror movies bore me, you know, because they're so hyper focused on trying to be one thing. Yeah. Whereas, it's you know, some of them do have a good story. You know, like I, I liked the It movies. I, yeah, you know. I, I didn't even find It two to be scary at all. I didn't it really. Was, it wasn't even It one really wasn't that. It, it really it, nothing scary. Me but it was more unsettling. Whereas It two was more funny. I laughed so much in well, It. Well, I don't. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Me scary either. What well, some people yeah, said about Midsummer is like it's more humorous than Hereditary. I didn't see any humor in that movie unless it was a very like in Hereditary or Midsummer. Midsummer. Oh. Okay. Well, I don't know. Blake said he laughed a lot throughout the movie, but I, I mean, like I said, laughs or anything. I I know occasionally I'll laugh at something that just I can't even remember what it was. There was something in uh, Joker that he did or somebody did. I can't remember what it was, but I laughed, and I was the only person in the theater oh, who laughed. And I, I was like, I've had that well, moment. <laughs> you know, in the Lego, the first I watched the first Lego movie in theaters. Yeah, and you know the in the beginning he throws or not in the beginning this towards the end he. You know, he kills Morgan Freeman's Lego character, beheads him, and is all dramatic. I went, ah! <laughs> like, just died laughing. And all of these kids are, it's real quiet, and parents are real quiet <laughs> about it. Like, oh, it's supposed to be serious. And I just laugh because the way they did it was hilarious. Yeah. He was doing this big motivational speech and gets cut off. Just, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. No, see, and again, it's what you find humor in. We find humor in weird things that come up. And well, the, 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 there's a, there's I think a level it was of animated to be slaps, humorous. Yeah. Too. Well, yeah. That's, and I'd say, like, when you're dealing with animated humor where they do something overly expressive, I consider it to be like a cousin of slapstick humor because half of slapstick is just the expression used behind doing it. And that's half of what that is. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I, I know that that's the kind of genre. And for a long time, I, I, I'm way more, and I still have this. I'm way more likely to click on a comedy and watch it than I am to click on something else. If it's serious, I really have to fight myself to be like, maybe it, it might be really good. Just, just watch it. That's why you should watch that new Paul Rudge I was telling you about. Living with yourself. Well, I mean, is it more serious? It, it's, it's weird. It's, I, I assume it's genre it's, hopping. It's, Yes, but yeah. it's it's mainly a comedy. But yeah, it's it's real weird. Like they do weird time jumps in that movie in that show. Also, for all my uh, decom fans out there, who Disney commercial? Disney Channel okay. original movies. Um, I was making sure that's what you're talking about. What was it? We we looked it up the other day for something. What was the name of that movie where the kid clones himself? It's Dude, the yeah. other me. Yeah. Uh, well, I always like the mermaid one. There's oh yeah, thirteenth year. Yeah. Is it twin? Yeah. Is it twin? Twin geniuses, or is it like? No, no, no. He makes a clone of himself with a kit that he finds, and he doesn't think it's going to work. And then he wakes up in the morning, and there's a clone of him, and he sends him to. He sends the clone to school so he can try and stay home yeah. and different stuff like that. There's a there's another. It's funny you brought that up. It, immediately when I saw that trailer on Netflix come up for the uh, living with yourself and myself or whatever, I was like, that's just the Disney Channel original movie remade for adults. What was the name? I think it was just called Genius, right? Like where the kid went, like he acted like he had a twin or something and like one was cool one was not 
and Emmy, Emmy Emily Rossum was in it. I, I do not remember uh, this off from your description. Yeah, but uh, that does not mean that it, I don't. It's remember It's a combination it. of those two. Like there's like there's the good clone that's like I'm the smart one. I'm the one that's that thinks about everything. There's the bad clone who's like I'm lazy. Go do all my work for me. Are we gonna get on decoms for a second? Because decoms are great. Speaking of which, it's it's October. I would be remiss if I did not mention Don't Look Under the Bed or whatever it's called. Yeah, that's a good movie. That movie. Is, uh, what, that's one of those movies where I don't think that anybody at Disney who greenlit that movie realized how scary it was going to be to certain kids. Unlike a, a Disney, like, you know, Hocus Pocus is a Disney Channel original movie, but it's, uh, it's nothing that crazy about it. I do not remember that. I don't either. Wow. Yeah, that's like... Hey, I, some of the Goosebumps stuff was scary as a kid. Oh, the oh dude, it was. Yeah, yeah dude. No, the movies. Oh, uh, I never saw oh, the, the little the, the, shows. Was the animated one? No, is, they, they had live right? action... They had a live action series. Oh. Yeah, I remember because sometimes there was one that I remember so vividly because it was just weird to me. There's a girl who uh, there you're seeing these parents go through their things, and this girl has a um, a guy come up. She apparently leaves her backpack at school. He's creepy to her. brings his brings He brings her backpack back to her, and the parents are like, "Oh, he's nice. Don't worry about it. Whatever." But it turns out he's a monster, and he's trying to chase her and eat her. When she gets home and whatever, she's trying to convince her parents that he's a monster. And then the big plot twist of it all is that her parents were actually monsters, and she is too. And that they eat the guy because they can't have other monsters encroaching on their territory. That's not. That's not. Uh, um. I don't remember Goosebumps. the name of it. It was Goosebumps. That's 100- that's one hundred percent Goosebumps. Are you sure? Absolutely. I thought that was. Are Are you afraid of the dark story? No, that one hundred percent Goosebumps. Okay, I, I really, the, I really thought the, that was. Are you afraid of the dark story? It had the typical Goosebumps ending Intro. where it's all all oh. the families like. Ha, oh. Ha, ha, ha. oh yeah, there's a couple of Are You Afraid of the Dark stories like that. But I do know what you're talking about with Are You Afraid of the Dark, and that was Nick, wasn't it? I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought you said Disney. I was just curious because yeah. Goosebumps my, was at Disney though. No, Goosebumps wasn't uh, tied to any of the big I networks. I don't think it was, at least. No. Yeah. Or Halloween. Uh, it, it is weird how how quickly people will jump into one mindset because of a time of year. It's October. Time to do spooky, spooky. stuff. We did it. I mean, part of it's because it's fun, I guess. But the other time, it's like... Some people take it, it real serious. It makes you feel festive. Is there a benefit of feeling festive? Hell Yeah. I mean, I think I agree with that, but at the same time... You don't get all festive and like warm inside like when you walk into the mall and you hear Christmas music with a big-ass Christmas tree no, in the middle? No, I do not at all. Oh, you're weird. Actually, I really... I hate it because... It, I feel sorry for y'all. Way too many people. Well, I was going to say, do you do anything? Do you get festive for Thanksgiving? That That is the oft-forgotten holiday in terms of fest, uh, festiveness. People don't tend, at least in our area, I don't know about anywhere else, but people do not tend to decorate for Thanksgiving too much around what here. What are you going to decorate? Turkeys? There are people that do Thanksgiving decorations in other parts of the world. I mean, I can understand like table pieces and stuff like that, maybe. But like, oh, I mean, like little, like little tur- turkey cutouts, no. similar like our little pumpkin one that's hanging up. It's no. like a turkey one. Some of them they have the little pilgrim stuff on it, which I guess is getting a little bit less acceptable as we move through the <laughs> exactly uh, replace Columbus Day with, with well, uh, Indigenous People Day. I uh, like fall, like like if you like decorate for fall, which mm-hmm. is like kind of like a lasting thing from like October to like also fall fucking lazy. December. Because yeah. it, you essentially do it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's lazy to an extent because it's like you decorate for every other hallow, or for every other major holiday to an extent. Some people do. I mean, that's a weird thing around here. Some people uh, decorate for Fourth of July. That's weird to me. That is because yeah. we've never done that. Yep. Some people decorate for Valentine's Day. I've That's seen, even weirder. There's a house not oh, far no, from I know, where I you know. used to live that always has ha- uh, Valentine's decorations. Are you talking about the pink, one on... Pink lights, little heart things that go up, and they're huge. And they're obvious like decorations for a yard. I thought you were talking about the house at the end of the street we're on. No. At the cross section. You know how I'm talking about that. Yeah. They do some weird decorations. They do, but there's also... No, I, I normally like theirs because it's, it's at least interesting. Yeah. But, yeah. Effort. Yeah. Well, let's go get some food, boys. Yeah, I am hungry. Let's go. I'm going to call it's... this one quits. Uh, like we said, we've been Dickish at Best. If you like what we got going on here, we come out with a new episode every two weeks. For our patrons, they get the episode a week early uh, and uh, some other stuff as well. If you like video game podcasts, you can get some stuff that is in relation to video games. Go check it out. It's patreon.com slash nartech. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. Talk some shit about us in the comments below. Tell us your favorite horror movies, all that stuff. Spooky stuff. This will be the last set with spooky stuff for this show. Because until next year, right? Until until <laughs> next year. Yeah. Dang, Halloween is next week. Yeah. Yeah, it's next week. So say goodbye to the spooky set if you watch this and, and care about that at all. This is I'll say this. We should have done costume. The set's more for us. And yeah, by the way, that, that does tie into something. Just like the else. Christmas tree and the Christmas music. 
Yes. 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 The the, the crackling fire. Half of it's just because it makes me feel good. So apparently, so you, I'll give you this. All said it does it. Festivity has its benefits. There you go. Because that Christmas episode of Triangle Square. So you don't get all. But, so I loved it. But, so you lied when you said you don't get all warm and happy. Feeling. I don't like that at, at places like the mall or stores. I like it. It feels extra. I'm like I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. It feels, Why are you bothering? It feels extra when I work there. I don't like going to the mall though. So I guess it doesn't really change anything. Well, I don't, I'm talking I, about, I don't that hate was just it. one example, like Christmas lights and stuff like that. Houses Fair. there. All right, we're gonna go get some food. Eggnog. Appreciate you guys. If you enjoyed this, let us know. Like it if you hated it. Thumbs down it. Whatever. Let us know. Like it, like it if you hated it. <laughs> Thanks to our <laughs> patrons. Uh, Dan Barber, Josh Jarrell, Matthew Green. My name is Dan Douglas Below. Sean Santarud, Eric McAllister, Matt Sycamore, Funk Turkey, my boy who was on an episode. Shadowist, Stephen Salazar, The Stonard, Travis Below, Eduardo Palomino, Stefan Swanlin, Coy Live, Philip LeGuerre, Corey Hickerson, Brian, Donovan Williams, William Digital Spooker, Derek Porter, Josh Ayers, Sean One Neo, Brandon Edwards, Tyler Powers, and Dylan Kirby. Thank you so much.